That's yes. fine, so we'll open the meeting. So it looks like we've got... This would be the accounts payable manifest in the amount of $604,827.71. And seconded. All those in favor? Aye. There's a school uh, no, just, payment for five million. Yeah, does that have a yellow note on the front? No, actually. Oh. Um, this this just reminds us to give it to Cal when, uh, when we sign. Can you go off and read this before we get to the day? Yes, the what, what did you just say, Ken, about this one? There's a what in here? There's a school district payment. If you look at the next page, I think they'll list the school district for five hundred. <coughs> I think it's 549. Yes. Okay. Just so you know, we don't spend that much money every day. Yes. Yes, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Good to know. Thank you. And that goes back to. Yeah. Back to Carol. All right, I'll take the first uh, payroll manifest, which is from July 27th in the amount of $42,140.60. So moved. And second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can we have bigger lines for us to sign? <laughs> when I get a new stamp. Okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Oh, that's great. Because it's a stamp, not first Yeah. Thank you. All right. And then a second uh, manifest. Can I do? Yeah. I don't need the rest of them. Okay. And this is just because we didn't have um, meetings for like three weeks, correct? Yeah. Second manifest is from August the 10th. In the amount of $53,874.35. And seconded. All those in favor. Aye. Cal, you sometimes have had, or um, mayor's had people come in and sign, so we don't have to do it now. Did that just not happen this time? Uh, it didn't happen this time. Also, there's two documents accidentally held together. There's a blue sticky. Oh, I got it. Yeah. So we oh, yeah. see it go separately? Uh, not the one you're holding, Scott. Like okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Manifest. That's when we get back. Are we just signing this, or does it need to go through a vote? Oh. Yeah. Uh, Which welfare. one is it? Welfare, you do need to vote. Because that's a regular manifest. Yep. All right. Here, actually, take that back. That's the welfare manifest. Yep. All right. All right. So this is a welfare manifest in the amount of 1000 $549.25. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next should be the Citizens Bank letter. Yeah. Okay, that's yep. Yeah. That's that one there. Okay, so this is the, the disbursement for the Sam Lake Trust that yep. was okay. there every year. Yeah. <clears throat> so that is a distribution of funds from Sam Lake Trust in the amount of $12,045.66. So moved. And seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Where does this money go? Into the capital reserve fund, the Sam Lake Trust capital reserve fund. And it's Warrant Article 2024-24. Yeah, oh, that's right, too. Yes. You have to say what warrant article it's. No, we have to do a warrant article. We have to do a warrant article every year for this. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. This was the first year that we did that. Oh, these are um, reappointments. That's right. So, all right. So, next is the 2025 Forest Fire Warden appointments. Ken, I'm assuming everybody on the fire department that is a warden is listed. Is listed, correct. Looks good. And do we need to sign anything? Or yeah. Just... 
Schütze will come to the and do we need to put this piece that had my signature, yeah. your signatures, and okay. Do we need a motion or just signatures? Just signatures. Uh, Is it forest fire wardens? Yeah. Yes, that is correct. That's basically everybody, isn't it? No, actually. A little less than half the department, maybe a third of the department, maybe a quarter. The department's around 25 million. Do you have a uh, description of what a fire warden? So there, um, wildland fires um, is kind of the um, burn permits. Um, I guess the state can technically use them if they have a, a bigger incident. Um, oh, they can be called in. Oh, yeah. okay, good. And do they? Um, do we still have anybody? Do we have anybody over in the cap near the towers? Well, there are some. There are a couple. Yeah. There's, there's a few towers that are yeah. still open. Right? There's state employees. Still. Oh, um, right. not like Oak Hill or what, anything. They volunteer. Most of them are staffed by yeah. volunteers. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's all run, I think, through the state. It is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. So D to sell map. 101 lot 21 to David and Denise. Here. They are not. I told them that we would, the deed was ready and that you guys would sign it. And okay. They'll come in this week and yep. sign it and give us a check. Mm -hmm. But we don't need a motion. No. Nope. Okay. You guys agreed to? We yep, we already agreed to do that. To make it's just sure. the deed that was prepared. What's the last thing that I don't know how to pronounce it? They are. Okay, I okay. guess so that's just two things. Warrant for land use change tax map 240, lot number 6. Ken, this is the um, 1890 Henry. Um, I didn't get a chance to read. Is that handy? <laughs> this is what is that? Land use change tax? Yeah. Um, I think it would be for Old Tilton Road. Or there's two. 240. Um, it's probably 105, isn't it? Um, there's 240 uh, and 105. Abbott Road. Oh, yeah. I think those are the two that I did. Abbott, Abbott Road. Oh. I can't think of their names at the just, moment. Okay. They bought the house close to the road. They built a new house out back. Oh, um, the Rancor's old house. Okay. The corner? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Two point one six. Yes, fifty three Abbott Road. Two sample. Okay, so that's sample. Just make sure that that matches. So this is the deed that was, oh wait, yeah, that's, this is, this isn't this, 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 this isn't part of that. Yeah. 
Yeah, this isn't part of that. Oh, how that got in there. Um, this is the deed for um, this is the deed for the the Dano's deed. This goes with the Dano package. Okay. All right. Then I don't see any paperwork in here for the land use for land exchange for either. But the wait it's in front of you or oh okay right yeah, that's fine. Just all right, so it's a little out of order. Yeah, it's all those okay. two deeds go. I think those go with the Dano. All right, package. so let me put this back. Okay. Now it makes more sense. <laughs> all right. So is Dano the one on Old Tilton Road? No, Dano. Dano's the one that bought the property up on the. Uh, um, Old Gilbert is on. All right, so Abbott is the first one, correct? Yes. Yeah, 240 lot 6 is Abbott. Right? Yeah. Your name is Sanford. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and you, do, are we just signing that next slide? Yep. Yeah. You don't mind. Thank you. And that was for, do they sell a piece of that property? No, no, no. What? Samples? That land just changed? No, they didn't sell. They just encroached on some current use land when oh, they got their new house. Okay. All right, so there's that. It looks like we signed two places, right? Yeah. No. Do we know what they're doing with the old house, or don't we? Are we privy to that? I'm just gonna say we're not privy to it. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, yeah, that one I just had a minute to, to look and, and match. So I think we're in good shape now. Change tax map one zero five lot twenty one. So that brings us to previous minutes. And Cal, I think I saw someone who you had Um, yes, but many important ways here for her 510 appointment. Oh, hi, Megan. Um, I'm happy to wait for you to finish. No, so. that's okay. Yeah. Come right up, please. Okay. This is 
You came in quietly. I didn't even see you come in. No, I thought we could clean it up. All right. Can you pass me the whole piece? Yes. Yes, of course. Thank you. Great, thanks. Thank you. Just one here if anyone else wants to go in. cycle about a code of ethics. Um, I know that um, some boards and commissions are waiting for word on the select board on what's happening with that. Um, so I'm not sure where it's at in your process, but I wanted to lend some information and really just as a resident um, who's laying roots here in Canterbury for a long time, um, my concerns and my hopes for what comes of this decision that you guys are working on. Um, so Canterbury relies on boards and commissions for the essential functions of our town. A code of ethics or code of conduct for such boards and commissions aims to ensure transparent, accountable, and impartial governance. And such a code serves to enhance public trust by promoting that decisions be made with the best interest of residents without conflict of interest or personal gain. The benefits also include increased civic engagement, improved decision-making processes, and a higher standard of integrity with uh, within town operations. Conversely, the absence of an ethical code risks eroding public confidence, fostering abuses of power, and undermining the effectiveness of work pursued for the common good. Implementing a code of ethics will formally preserve the town's democratic values and promote a culture of respect and ethical responsibility. Even if not enforceable, which that is, uh, there's an argument to be made that it can be, uh, a code of ethics serves as a vital moral compass guiding the behavior and decisions of public officials, and it may be held as the standard for how we want our town to function. So in my brief time in town, and it is brief, uh, I have heard countless stories of self-interested decision-making and unethical behavior within town government, both historical and among those presently serving our town today. I have witnessed myself violations of rights of law, inappropriate, irresponsible, disrespectful, and ethically questionable decisions, words, and actions. I have witnessed shockingly inappropriate behavior between town officials, um, both, oh, sorry, both explicit and implicit of, uh, toward residents by town officials, and behavior between town officials between each other that is unbecoming of the offices that they hold. I have also witnessed fairness, congeniality, kindness, respect, and ethically sound choices made in the interest of the common good. I hope that we can all agree that that is the Canterbury way. And my request and what I'm imploring here is that the select board establish this as the standard. Um, so we've also seen a recent uptick, I don't know if pay attention to local news, a recent uptick in media stories around ethical violations um, in town of House, New Hampshire, most recently Concord and Portsmouth. Um, we know that those can come at high legal costs to taxpayers, which is something we all like to avoid. So in this little informational booklet here, so it is a fairly common standard to have. Every city in New Hampshire, um, every everything that qualifies a city, not every town, has either a code of conduct or ethics or both. The New Hampshire State Legislature has a code of ethics. The New Hampshire General Court has a code of ethics. And I highlight those because um, you know, some of our boards serve as more of a legislative capacity, similar to what you all do, and then some boards serve more as quasi-judicial. So the fact that the those at the top doing these functions in our state have codes of ethics, um, I think that we should be following suit. Um, and then there's a non-exhaustive list. I have something like 134 towns. Um, and I have been trying to go through, and you gotta Google each one, is there a code of ethics? So this is a non-exhaustive list that I've gotten through so far of towns that do have them, if you want to look them up um, for examples. And on page two, you have the legal support. Um, the legal support for codes of ethics and why we need them to 
protect right to know, which is transparency, um, avoid abusive office and corrupt practices. So I also included here sort of a template um, based on all of the ones that I was able to look at of what these things include, their scope, their purpose, um, highlighting Canterbury's core values and principles that are informing why we want one of these. Um, and then it goes into um, either code of conduct, or sorry, code of ethics, ethical, different ethical standards, which include conflict of interest, uh, com confidentiality, impartiality, and public trust. Um, and then the code of conduct, conduct um, focuses more on behavioral expectations of professionalism, courtesy, respect, compliance with the law, and those sorts of things. Um, you can get into the like minutia of dress code and stuff like that. I don't think that that's necessary for our time necessarily, but um, but those some uh, towns actually have that. Uh, I also included, I'm sorry, last thing here on um, page four, additional considerations. So I think that it would be really helpful to get public invol involvement, um, maybe in the form of a survey to see what is important to people in terms of how their officials behave in their official capacity, um, how they relate to the public, how they interact with each other, um, <coughs> how the public wants to see documentation and where they'd like it accessible. Um, I think that, you know, Canterbury's been doing things a certain way for a very long time and times are changing and the town is anticipated to grow and um, I think that it's time that we just start at least taking a look at what residents want and updating and maybe the residents say, this is what we want, we're, we're good with, um, you know, how accessible things are, how minutes are done or, um, you know, how officials are interacting with the public and that's great, but I think that the question should be asked. Um, and then also training and education. I, I think that there's a lot of free training offered with the um, New Hampshire Municipal Association, and I'm shocked at how few people take it. Um, to that end, the last thing here is I um, added New Hampshire Municipal Association's most recent conflict of interest debt slide um, that's titled It All Begins With Ethics. Uh, so this can go into a bit more detail for your own research as you're, you're forming, hopefully forming this document for the town um, as to, to more detail as to what they recommend is included. Um, and I think that I personally have been quite surprised and shocked at the resistance, the hesitancy towards a code of ethics um, when I brought it up particularly with officials and the contrast that I have um, experienced when I bring it up to residents who generally think this is a very good thing to have. Um, but again, don't, don't take my word for it, survey, <laughs> survey the residents. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions, but really this is just me coming to provide you some more context, provide some more information, um, and implore you to, to implement something like this. I think it's really important. I say thanks for all this information, um, since I'm the person who currently is charged with crafting, oh, <laughs> crafting a code of conduct. And here's my draft oh. that um, when I have a minute I work on, and quite frankly, every time we have a meeting, something comes up that changes it, and that is a good addition. Um, we had a recent meeting where we went through all the job descriptions for the police department. There were a number of items on there that uh, were were good ideas to include in this. Mm -hmm. um, the Municipal Records Committee that was just formed when we met recently and talked about um, how to keep minutes and procedures and process, which I know you're also very involved with and concerned with. Um, it's also something that should be in here. Mm -hmm. at, at first look, my problem has been to make it a document that's user-friendly enough that somebody will actually read it because it doesn't help if you have a big, long, official, wonderful thing that outlines everything, and then everybody says, too big, I don't care, I'm not going to read it. Mm -hmm. So my first goal um, is to have anybody who, well, I think our goal is to have anybody who wants to aspire to town position to have this document to be able to know ahead of time what we expect and also, quite frankly, what the rules are because there is a lot of legalities in both in all our boards and committees that people need to be aware of before they just say, yeah, I want to be a, a whatever. Um, so I think that's part of it. 
Um, I'll be very interested. I've been hiking through some of the other town's code of conducts too. There are a lot of them. They're all very different. And I really appreciate having all of this to look through. And the New Hampshire Municipal Association, these slides outline everything really well. But I think there's a lot that we can do to make it, to craft it so it's a usable document for our town. Um, and I'd be interested to hear who has given you negative feedback on having a code of conduct or ethics, and, you know, that obviously need to go into it here, because at this level, uh, and any of the boards I've talked to, they're all, they're all interested in having it spelled out so that we all know, so that we're all on the same page and that we can all work for the town. Um, and it's good to have the process and the procedure. So if you have a question, okay, well, here it is. And, and me personally in crafting this, I think it's important for people to know that up front. So that you know, there should be a copy of whatever we come up with available in March or in April, whenever you know it comes time for people to sign up to run for select board, to look at this and say, this is what we expect, and this is what you should aspire to. I agree; it's very important. And um, and I added at the end of that, uh, Boskowin. Um, so yeah, I saw that. they actually require that appointed and elected officials sign. So this is an example of one where they, you are to sign um, this document, this code of conduct. Um, it's on that last page there. Um, and your conflict of interest statement that, that anybody who's uh, uh, an employee appointed or elected needs to sign and agree to this to take their position. Um, so I put that in there. As an we discussed that. I don't know how that will play out because that's tricky. Um, especially if you have boards already in position and you present them with this and someone says, no, I'm not gonna sign. How do you deal with that then? Um, it'll, it would come up, I'm sure. So um, I think it's a good thing to consider. I, I can't say whether or not that'll happen, but at least people should be required to, I believe personally, uh, read and you know uh, acknowledge that they've read it. I can't say signing it. But that's at the end of the process. Um, I think crafting the document first. And actually, when you gave us the code of conduct, was it from Boston? What time you, you sent us one? Yeah, it was not. It was Belmont. Yeah. Belmont. Yeah. That was one of the things I Yep. And <clears throat> I, would, I would just say, you know, Boston's our neighbor. Yeah. Their, their select board is incredibly friendly. And you could, it, this was approved in 2015. So you can ask, how did they implement yeah. that with people who are already serving? Um, how did they do that? And this is something that they review periodically. So this was most recently reviewed June 5th, um, 2024. So in terms of a standard procedure and process, I think that you know we, we will have review processes for things like an annual CIP review. There should just be across the board an annual review of specific documents for boards and commissions. And this one should be included to make sure that it's um, a living document, as you said. That's a good way to term it, a living document. Yep. As as it applies to living town members <laughs> and the living and changing town. And I think you're right, everything is changing now. And I believe transparency has come to the top of the heap as far as an important concern. And certainly, um, as Cal can attest, when we get the new website up and running uh, and how that works and how people can find information about how boards are working or not working or what information they're sharing. Um, I think we'll hear a lot from them. But, um, uh, a uh, asking the town's opinion about how this should be is always a good idea. Hmm. Good Survey is the word yeah. I was Survey looking for. Is Survey is the word I was looking for. Yeah. But yeah. Well, this is this is great, and thanks for including those slides. I've got them earmarked somewhere, but it's always better to have a paper copy yeah. to put in my stack with this. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for the time. Megan, can you um, email this in as well? Sure, please. And we're just um, to the town. Yep. Okay, thanks. Sure. Hi, Brian. Hey, how are you guys? I'm good. Wires up on holes up there now. We're working at it. Um, 
Director, Brian Christian, Director of Regulatory Affairs, Comcast. I've been in front of you folks a few times over the past few years. Um, Ken asked me to come on in, probably at your behest, uh, to talk about our progress building out to uh, the residents in the community. Um, I shared a list with Ken sometime in April, I think, uh, regarding um, us building out to about 200 addresses on Comcast. Uh, business. Um, there are probably about another dozen to 20 homes that we've applied to the state broadband matching grant initiative um, to build out with some funds from the state government. Is that um, the BEAD? Um, no, that's broadband matching grant initiative. Oh, something else. All right. Yeah. BEAD has not been, um, there's no programs yet for BEAD. Okay. Um, Let's go back to eat in a minute. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I didn't mean to interrupt. I um, wanted to make sure I knew what you were talking about. The National Grant in this initiative was uh, funded by ARPA money, um, and the state has to, in a, the town, I guess, for that matter, have to commit to their ARPA funding by the end of this year. Um, we expect the contract between Comcast and BEA, Business and Economic Affairs, to go before Governor and Council at one of their September meetings. So that will hopefully get us our funding for the other dozen and 20 homes. Um, so <coughs> when this is all said and done, uh, I think we're going to build to about 220 homes. Uh, the, the list I shared with Ken earlier, uh, as I said, Comcast is building on there um, on, on, our, uh, on our investment, I guess, back that words. Um, there were some dates shared. Some of those dates slipped about 60 to 90 days. Uh, Black by words for supply issues. Uh, the ones at the beginning are the 60 to 90 days. We think the ones at the end are probably going to be close to hit the dates we, uh, we shared. Uh, but I think we're going to get most of most of those 200 or so hooked up here by the end of the year. The other dozen to 20 are going to be a little bit. Um, you understand contracts with the state. Not nothing with that. So, uh, that's why we're happy to share the list and. Um, on what we can do on our own and not wait for state uh, state slash federal dollars for that. Bead, Bead is kind of the next iteration of broadband money. Um, the state's going through uh, basically a challenge process right now. Um, I, think those, I think the challenge process ends August 12th, if my memory serves correct. Um, and then once once that is done, and I'm not even sure if there's a rebuttal to the challenge process, there's probably going to be a rebuttal. Um, I don't think you're going to see the funding. And the state has several hundred million dollars. Um, I don't think you're going to see the funding flow probably until sometime next year. Um, that's kind of the speculation part of my testimony. Uh, but the challenge process doesn't end until August 12th. There's probably going to be a rebuttal. They have, um, they have to get the ARPA money committed before the end of this year. So I think they're really focused on that. Um, as I've said many times in front of this board, there's enough money to get everybody served in the state. It's just you got to go through the process. One of the other hiccups with getting some of the money from the state that's flowed through from the federal government is every address needs to have what's called a BSL, a broadband serviceable location. So if it doesn't have a broadband serviceable location, I don't, what's the address here, I'm sorry? Like at this building? Uh, this is 10. 10. Yeah. If, ten oh, seven, center row. Okay. Seven, seven, seven center row seven. doesn't have a broadband serviceable location assigned to it, it is not eligible for federal or hmm. state funding. So that's been a, that's been a process that- And what uh, determines that? Um, or obviously NT, NTIAA and the FCC have a map, and they, here, again in the weeds, um, broadband service locations are determined by lat long. And if lat long comes out into that field and it doesn't have an address, if it's not 10 and a half, it's not, it's not eligible. For oh my gosh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's it is, a little nit It is a process. Um, <laughs> and that's why you're probably going to see, you're, you're going to ask questions on addresses. So if we have, okay. did you say this is seven? Seven. Seven. seven and that's nine center 
let's call it 11 center road and that field is nine center road you're passing by nine center road you can get it even though it doesn't have a broadband serviceable location gotcha. but it's not eligible for reimbursement so oh, okay Got it. so okay. um if you don't see addresses but you see addresses on this end of the road this end of the road and then middles doesn't have to sell chances are you're going to get it but they'll okay. so get coverage but not reimbursed the provider will get reimbursed <laughs> yeah so it's you guys have been hearing me for years talk about it. <laughs> Ken's like, the board wants you to come in. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that was the extent of our exchange. <laughs> um, so that's kind of where we're at in the process. It's it's a slow moving process. I know we have released some addresses for hookups today on Sandmore Road. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Sandmore Road. Um, and they're going to start rolling. So. Okay. Uh, when we release addresses, these are those approximately 200 I talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, it's in our own best interest to help out customers. Uh, so we are sending door to door salesmen in, in the, uh, sort of in like conformity with local peddlers' ordinances and stuff. They come on, they come checking with the police department. We send mailings. Um, we'll even do phone calls if you have a phone rental for that address. So, yeah. um, it's definitely in our best interest to um, put the customers up. You made a comment, kind of comment about there's lots of wires up now. So there are definitely wires up, but they may not be connected, right? So there's um, there's steps to go along the way. So um, don't call us, we'll call you type of thing. <laughs> and uh, when you get run into a couple of situations where like somebody says, ah, the wire's in front of my house, and they've called for an install, and Somebody's scheduled to install and it hasn't worked because oh, it's not right. connected back to the system yet. No. Well, that's so, not terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, of the two, if, when you build out to these 220 homes, what percentage of the town then will be covered? Yeah, Ken and I have discussed this. I think we're going to get everybody. We, it's one of those things we don't know what we don't know. I think there may be ones and twos he's left. But but after the 220, you said there was like 12 or a bunch of houses. Yeah, Is right. that like the only, the last 12 in town? We think we're pretty darn close after that. Um, really? I don't want to say, would, I don't want to say you're not going to come, you're not going to ask me in a year, what about, you know, one Elm Street? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we, you know, Ken and I have worked a lot in the spreadsheets and we built it in and I think we're getting pretty much everybody. Wow. Um, yeah. So we've had two new houses coming into town. Are those going to be picked up under this? Or are they going to be? I, I, I don't know what, what address they Depends on where they are. Yeah. Well, I'm taking it down Old Till Road. There's one going in there. Yeah. Yeah. They already have, if there's already coverage on Old Till Road, then they will have it as soon as their house yeah. is set up. Um, if they don't have coverage have? today, yeah. if the neighbors on either side don't have coverage today, that will be until the rest of the town is done. I think Old, Old Tilton Road is a road that popped in my head that was unserved, so uh, I could be wrong, but yes. Well, I'm one of your customers. Yeah, you have. Yeah, okay. No, Old Tilton Road is served. Yeah, that's why you say it's not on the list yeah. of unserved. It, right. It doesn't yeah. pop for me. Yeah, right. all the way down to Ginger's, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. I have, you know, there's Ames, Asbury, Ayers. Asby, Ayers, yeah. Battis Crossing, Borough, Prior Bush, Clough Pond, Flag, Foster, Dr. Borough, and Baptist Grill, <laughs> and on and on. It's been yeah. a long time coming. Huh? <laughs> it is a long time coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brian, a couple of questions that have come up, um, one of which I see a couple of planning board members here. Are you, is what we're seeing being run now all fiber optic, or is it a combination of fiber optic? It's a combination. So. Right. Our technology is kind of uh, our our products and services are kind of technology agnostic. So the speeds we're delivering in Boston on our HFC network or San Francisco, are the same speeds we're going to be delivering here in Canterbury. Um, the way the technology is going is uh, it's a lot of software driven. It's not it's not the, that wire. Um, no, it's you know you hear fiber about future proof but Fiber's not future because fiber needs to get replaced in about 10 years. Okay. Uh, if you think you have old buildings in town, you think of glass in an old building, 
pretty fragile. Yeah. And we're finding that in the industry is that fiber needs to be replaced. It's not it's not it's not future proof. Like it's a buzzword, it's a marketing word, but yeah. it needs to be maintained just like every other piece of infrastructure. Yeah. So the residents that are expressing concern over fiber versus copper is really a non issue then. In our yeah. In our experience it is. Yeah. Um, but the service you can provide is in general. Yeah, you know, yeah. we and I have a whole deck of we're going through iterations of technology. We're about to launch uh, DOCSIS 4.0, which is basically bonded uh, upstream channels, and it's been it's been um, it's been field tested, and it's starting to be field deployed at uh, speeds up to six gigabits metrical. So uh, the future is coming, um, yeah. and it's not it's not based on the wire. Okay, um, understood. And the other question, second question, I guess I'll say is what speed can the town expect? Yeah, so right now, um, I didn't bring my speed slides and they're just always changing, but right now, you know, we offer an entry package at 20 megabits, like three megabits up. Um, we are in the process of doing kind of a mid upgrade on our way to that DOCSIS 4.0 I discussed. And we have packages that are two gigabits right now. Uh, Twenty up, but what's your download? Yeah, uh, down. Like you want to say that two gigabits might be three to four or five hundred megabits. Right. I, don't, I, guess I don't have a slide. That's right. The just slide everywhere, miles, but... so no pun intended. But yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, this, once we get to Docs four point which should be sometime next year. Um, uh, we're going to start really marketing our symmetrical speeds, um, and 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 that's just not for you though. That's for that's for people on Center Road. Um, yeah, and that'll be another one. Same down, same up is down. Yeah, and every yeah. consumer is going to have uh, the same suite of services. Yeah. depending if they're being built now, if they were built five years ago. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And for those asking, have any salespeople started? I don't know if anybody's gone to Sanborn yet. Um, I literally got that information at 10.30 this morning. Gotcha. Uh, that was from construction. I haven't yeah. connected with sales. Okay. That's a busy road. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, but we would obviously comply with, you know, local peddler ordinances. Understood. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure <laughs> the peddlers are yeah. peddling high-speed internet. Yeah. yeah. The peddler's yeah. ordinance. I get, I get weird when you, even people come knock on my door, you know, we, I live in a rural community. Somebody starts walking through the highway, you're like, what's going on? No. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, that's why they check it. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of those guys that sees the wires hanging down and stuff like that. Do, do we talk to you or do we talk to um, Consolidated or who's, who's so, responsible? Opinion side of this equation, nine times out of ten it's on us and it's probably consolidated. But take a picture, you can send it to us, we'll, okay. we'll go look at it that day and fix it. We've got a wire that's been hanging in front of the cemetery for three or four years. Yeah. It looks like the wire is broke and held up the loop that's hanging down there. What's up? this cemetery? Right, right out there. Like, yeah, you, you probably can, can almost see it from yeah. there. Okay. I'll, I'll send somebody by tomorrow. Would you? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's on the bottom, so I'm guessing it's probably not yours. Is it? If it's yeah, I mean, there's generally a hierarchy on the telephone poles. Uh, telephones generally the bottom work next, and then electric. And there's other telcos that kind of go below us and above telephone, but it's it's generally in the middle here. Is there a way that people can, can con like, as you say, you kind of a little weirded out when people come walking up your driveway to knock on it to sell you, even if it's something you really want. Yeah. Is there a way for people, is there an easy way for people in town to contact Ping and say, Ping, is it is it our turn yeah. yet? Or um, yeah, you know, obviously I want to trust the system and say one hundred Comcast, but I also know there, there was definitely an example of somebody insisting there was wire in front of their house and the, Said yes, the person on the other end of the phone said, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. take your word for it, got an install scheduled, and the guy actually hooked the wire to the house. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, and yeah. It, it just wasn't connected further down the line. Yeah. Um, 
So I want to say trust the system. You know, what I can do is I can I can do my best efforts to let Ken know when the addresses are released and. And then can we put that out on like the town the um, newsletter or the, the town email. newsletter website? Town email or on the website. And just say these addresses next. There's going, yeah. going to be somebody coming. Yeah. Okay. Um, as I said, it's definitely in our best best interest to to connect people. Otherwise, mm. it's lack of better words, it's stranded capital, right? You don't want yep. you don't want to go wire somebody that doesn't. Well, it's not like we have. It's not like people don't want it. So they're going to yeah. want you to come and sell it to them. Well, you know. But <laughs> so long as we can make that that, that happen easily, yeah. that'd be great. Yeah. So we'll sure. All right. Ken and I have been connected, but now that people are now that these things are starting to get released, it's probably even you know, as important to stay connected. So, so and how does our uh, Cal? What's our schedule for the new website? Would there is there something that's doable like a Comcast button thing? I know you and I have talked about buttons for important like. Is compact cast at my house thing? You know, here's the list of addresses or? Um, yeah, we could put that on the, we could put it in the news section on the current website or we could make a little Comcast button or probably not. I mean, enough people have been asking about it then. Do you have, do you have GIS capabilities? Um, no. Not on the current website. No, that's, we have Avatar. Yeah, shows our um, maps, yeah, but we have um, Yeah, you obviously have the service map that I've shared with you, but that's now starting to get a little outdated. Um, I mean, I, I yeah, we can say I mean, now, if, just if, when I think if, if it's closed. Ryan just sends me a list of, of addresses that are being released. We can just update our website when a, when a new list comes out and say, check our website for the list of addresses that have been released by Comcast. No. And expect someone to be approaching you. Or call us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> call you. Would yeah. that help bring speed things along? It would help for the consumers. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I've been having a lot of years. I understand the, yeah. the desire. Um, yeah. It would definitely help for the consumers. It's, uh, you know, like if that door to door salesman is working in Peter that day, it might be easier for somebody to call in. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think yeah. it would definitely help for sure. It doesn't hurt. Sure. So maybe if we include the phone number. Yeah. Yeah. And just for a more ed education aspect, so we'll, there's a process. So once it's constructed, it's tested, then activated, then the address is going to be activated in the billing system. So um, I think same word was actually done last week, but it was released. You've heard me use that term a few times today. It was released today, meaning it's released for something else. Yeah. So um, now it's really good to go. That's really good to go. Really good to go. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank Thanks. You. Yeah. Thank you, Brian, all right. for all your appearances. <laughs> I live in my this is, so, so this is the talk. first time I've seen you, so it's nice to see you, but I'm sure we'll see you again. Yes. <laughs> Thank you both. All right. Thanks, Thanks, Brian. Bye. Yeah. It's not bad. Mr. Nash. Once again. <laughs> Good to see you both. Well, I love a good correction. You know, I'm yeah. sorry. No, I think it's boring. <laughs> I tried to just do a no, copy no, and paste. No, we'll take another piece of paper. It's fine. <laughs> Is, are these the measurements that you were taking today? Yes. Did you receive a copy of the um, northerly option from the road agent? Yes. 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 Oh, that's yes. Right. I forgot yeah. to bring that. No, no, we have that. Thank you. See you there.
Uh, in the yellow. The yellow, yeah. Okay, we'll have it to refer to... Copies are copies. Um, so the very top thing is a letter that came in today um, about this topic from... Yep, from Greg Heath and Carrie Clock. Yes, those are names. And then underneath that, there should be one which is unsigned, which is the um, stapled to the northern copy. And then this, yep. underneath that should be the signed one from a few weeks ago, okay. which is stapled to the southern. Okay. All right, so I'll pass that down, um, and I'll, I'll pass that over so you have a chance to do that. Right? When, when did, um, when did uh, Carrie and Greg We got that letter this afternoon. Okay. Yeah, that was emailed. Do we have it? Did you say you emailed it to us? No, it was no, emailed to oh, us. Oh, the it's hard copy is there. Okay. No, I was just trying to see if I missed an email, because I could. So this is. Alright, so this so is. You have the one that's it's twelve ninety six stacks off. Uh, the northern. Yes. Stacks off. So yes, this northern is southern. Yep. So, so this is the one that we got. This is the one we read. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, there's just one copy. There's just one copy. There's just one copy. Sorry. Right. So Beth has the. Beth has the one. So that's copy John's uh, northern. Uh, Scott, do you want to look at that one? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that's what I was just going to do. Do we get to see the letter too? Yes, that's what we're going to pass it out. Of course. Are you done with the letter from Carrie Collins? One second. Can I just read it? Absolutely. I'll read it. It's Did you read this, uh, Scott? I have not. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, that letter, yes, I have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Four miles around. There you go. Yeah. You want to use that? Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. I can I can attest okay. to the fact that this is yep. the document right. from the uh, for the northern. Oh no, I saw this. Yeah, that's what you saw. Yeah. But at least yeah. Ken can keep that. That has the two hard copy. Okay. Okay. I got you. That one after. Yeah. 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 All right. I think we just sort of take this point by point. Yep. Yeah. 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 No worries. I've got a point. Yeah. 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 Say, would you like mine? I ran out to my car. You want, want these? <laughs> <laughs> I think you can do it. As you can move over, we're not going anywhere without them. So, I love that it's going to be recorded forever that people are sharing glasses. That's great. Oh, Stephen. I think I'll add that to my first shopping list. And I'll just keep a box of spares. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, like it's voting the, the right. bucket of uh, magnifying glasses. Yeah. That's probably an excellent idea. That's good to know. That's, that's, uh, that's not a bad idea, Ken, for any of the meetings that happen. You're good? Yeah, okay. Hopefully. <laughs> I'll take that back and we'll put that and back in your phone. Can that possibly be emailed to us? Yes, it can. Okay. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> and we each have this one, right? Uh, this yeah. is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and this is the northern. This right, is the what's, northern that's what's here. Northern pass. Yeah, the northern <laughs> pass, exactly. <laughs> All right. All right, so what I, I think we'll do is we'll just take it point by point. So, um, I'm just going to read this aloud into the record. So to the Board of Selectmen of Canterbury, New Hampshire, we are requesting the board to waive the ditch lines, depth and width of the road, northerly end of Wyvern Road, Canterbury, New Hampshire, for the following reasons. Point one, ditch lines will be created naturally due to the road being raised with gravel. 
And okay, you and the uh, fire chief took a ride up there today, right? Uh, Beth, I myself, and the fire okay. chief went up there. Um, we really didn't look at the ditch lines. I know on, in, in a couple areas of the road, it's, it's, the terrain drops off naturally, and yeah. then on the other side, is it rises naturally. So um, there's areas, I, I think, probably when you start talking about the ditch lines, you want to talk about the width because it's certainly narrow right now, and if it was widened, I think that may take care of some of the runoff issues. Okay. You yeah. know this, though, it never, with that torrential downpour, none of that washed out. Yeah. Well, no. There's nothing that washed out there yet, yeah. though. Well, if you, yeah, if you stop disturbing everything, then. But I think I we're going to be looking at the trees along the side, because that's what's grabbing. That is really what's well, grabbing, right. is the yeah. trees. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. But there was a lot of, well, when do we get to discuss the tree? Is there a point in your concern? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. So that, actually, let's let's go on. We'll come yeah. back to it. Well, so the width. Yeah, the width of the road will vary in width from 16 to 18 feet to maintain the existing natural aesthetics, i.e. trees, stone walls, etc. So so there we are, trees. It was very apparent when we were driving down there today, the, the rural character of that road, and you would have to do a monstrous amount of cutting to get it to 18 feet with a, with a four, two, foot. two foot on each side. Sure. It didn't seem, to me, it didn't seem appropriate for that okay. area. Also considering the other end of the road, the width, and even the beginning part of the northern yeah. end of the road, it, yeah. it seemed, uh, and, and um, Chief seemed to think that it was okay to get a vehicle down there, he was not, yeah, if uh, he felt that if the road was even close to what the existing stretch of the improved yeah. section is, then it would be not, not a problem from the fire department's perspective. <laughs> so yeah. certainly they're gonna have to cut some trees, but mm -hmm. it doesn't, in his, in his opinion, it didn't have to be any wider than what you currently have on the improved section. On the gravel, gravel part. Correct, yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Right. Especially yeah. considering, yeah, I didn't realize that the, how close the stone walls were to the edge and the, the, the only the really mature tree. Yeah, and the I only thing he talked about was a, a turnaround. Yeah. Um, at the end. Yeah. So a fire truck could come in and turn around. Um, yeah. It's rural. There's no fire hydrants, so they have to come in, get water, have a tanker come in, bring water in, and then turn around and go back and get another tanker in. So there'd have to be some kind of turnaround at the end. Yeah, I heard that. I measured it anyways. 40 feet, which is the road I did set 40 feet beyond yeah. the mm -hmm. last right way. And I'll, I'll make sure it's plenty wide enough. Yeah. I mean, okay. as you look at my road, yeah. I, I don't want to do <laughs> Yeah. I just want to, want to look good. Yeah. But I don't want to take out every big tree and everything. Else. Right. No. no. So I don't think we want that either. I mean, that's, you know, as you said, there's character. How about disturbing the aesthetics of the, yeah. of the area and how you would want to blast it? It's a, it's a beautiful little road. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, is power coming down from the north end then on this, or is it coming up? Well, the there's south? a power pole on the south end on our property. So the power pole know. is. So, so I don't see why down. people can't pull off that one. They, that's their issue, not mine. Understood. So, because I'm not a building or anything else. That is, right. that is up to them where they come from. Yeah. And it would also keep with the aesthetics by not having, if there's a pole already there that they can attach to, then yeah. that would. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. Do additional poles and disturb one. Right. Right. And it's already on the property. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, point three. Historically, Wyvern Road has not experienced washouts because the natural slope of the road is minimal. I think we've talked about that already. Um, point four. Due to Wyvern Road being deemed private, we would like to ask for a waiver for the width of the road and the thickness due to this status and not being a through road as the southerly end has put up a gate abutting my property. Putting up a gate technically makes it a dead end road. Is that gate locked now? I had no idea. It is not locked, locked but it's also not hinged. It looked like it was just that a section is, of fencing with two poles. It, like, it looks like they drove in two big pieces of rebar yeah. on either side of the road and then attached the, attach the gate to those pieces of rebar. But if if they own that road, they even specify in there they do not want, it's the north and the south. Yeah, yeah. 
You can drive around it, and I don't know what the, um, I can't remember if the chief weighed in on this or not, if there was a fire emergency and they needed to get through that gate, could they fire just- Fire department has a master key. Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> we would yeah. get through so, that gate. So that gate, could, that gate could be dealt with in an fire emergency. Fire department needs to get through there, yeah. so they'll figure out a way to get through there. You can kind of drive around it now, but um, <laughs> it's, not, it's not locked per se, it's not lockable, it's just standing. So. Um, if that makes a difference in the, in the thing, in the uh, discussion. All right, and the final point, I'm, I'll have you expand on this point. So we would also like the comment by the building inspector on our application to be removed or a letter stating that the select board does not agree with these comments, therefore striking it from our application and approval. We would like such a letter to be attached to our application and a copy given to us and our attorney, please. So on the application, you know where everybody like the fire department weighs in with these, the building inspector. On the roadway for application? Right. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. There's a comment by the building yeah. inspector basically that he wouldn't approve the building on one of the lines. But you, you didn't put it in the approval, and you know, you put in the upgrade that that would be the only um, I don't so think the, the building the inspector, the building inspector looked at the zoning map and one of the lots crosses two zoning. Oh, oh zoning. that issue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then he realized that it's because Webb talked to him, or you talked to him, and he realized that, okay, yeah, you're right, going that way. If you're going the smaller way and trying to squeeze so another one, three acre right. lot, okay. no. But one zone requires three lot. acres, one zone yeah. requires five acres. Yeah. So he felt that if, if you go by the letter of the zoning amendment or the zoning article, that he wouldn't be able to give a building permit on it because there isn't enough property to get because of the way where the zoning line lies. Okay. Um, after discussion with myself and the surveyor, um, we talked about other towns and how they would handle this, mm -hmm. and I think it's uh, it's pretty much a moot point at this point. Okay. And I think that that and, and the building inspector agreed. That. Well, that would be not a, that would not come up as an issue. Okay. Oh, so the building inspector is willing to. The building inspector would be change okay, his own comment. Would be able to change that. Oh, okay. Okay. Well. Okay. So, so I, I can yeah. I can talk to the building inspector to have him attach a letter. Yeah. To that. Okay. Just just, just so like everything carbon. So <laughs> oh, it's like a whole lot easier. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we get that. No, that makes sense because I understand yeah. everything agrees. Right. Uh, so what do we do now? I think you need to come up with a some kind of agreement on the proposed uh, improvement plan from the road agent. Yep. And maybe go down those points as yep. addressed in this letter, so you can come up with some kind of document that actually spells out what has to be done. Yep. All right. So uh, this is uh, the road agents. Uh, Report. Oh, can um, when we get to it, culverts. Yeah. When you get to the section on culverts, because when we drove today, it, some we mentioned culverts, but then I don't. We never specifically yeah. looked at where he was recommending. That's right. I know okay. where it is. Point it's four. down in that dip area. Okay. Well, he said, down there. Either do a culvert or build it up so it has a natural runoff. Yeah. Okay. So it was either or. So yeah. 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 Okay. Because that's right. not addressed in, in your in these points. So I want to make sure it's. Understood. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Sorry. Yep. No, that's okay. okay. Hold that thought. Hold that's it. That's all I'm, I'm saying. Putting a pendant. Right. So, all right. So, length of upgrade is 1,296 feet plus or minus, starting from the south side of current driveway of 93 Wyman Road, ending 40 feet plus or minus south of the new driveway for lot 16 1. So, the length of the upgrade would still be the 1,296, correct? Yes. yes. Right. So. Okay, so we're all in agreement on that. Yeah. All right, so moving on to the second item, the ditch line along the west side from the ledge crossing at 1,193 feet plus or minus will flow south to the end of the upgrade. And are See, we that, in? That's where the natural slope, and it, it tapers like that. So once yep. you bring the gravel up, it's gonna it's gonna taper it anyways away from it. But if you start digging, 
then you're going to have some washouts for sure. I'm not going to agree with that. I'm sorry. I mean, I've been all over you the yeah. town roads for the last two years, and where we're having problems is where we don't have ditches, and it's running down the ditch, and then it jumps up onto the roadbed. And I know you're going to try and get a crown to it and all that, and you're going to try and bring up enough gravel. It's just that's not what happens. Not putting culverts in is like. Well, no, I didn't say put the culvert. I'll put a culvert. Oh, okay. I thought you said no. No, this is a ditch one. The ditch one. Ditch one. No, no, the culvert is fine. I don't care about that. I'll put the culvert in. That's not an issue. All right. Well, I thought that's what you were saying. No, 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 no. All right. Okay. So, are we okay without ditch line? Right. I don't know how to weigh in on that, except driving the road. It certainly fell off at a down to as you're going towards the southern end of Wyman Road that it fell off on the on the right side of the road. So, if if it's crown and it, it, does that solve the does it solve it for the other side of the road? I can't speak to that. Right, which is the... The uphill, so the up by the north where the, the cemetery is, up that way. And what happens if we say no, um, and they don't do a ditch line and it washes out? It's a private road, and you've got to sign papers. Then it, we make a sign waivers. Oh, so you we, we sign, waivers. sign all the waivers, so which we're responsible for anything anyway. Right. So, so it's your problem. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That's yeah. oh, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean they're going to be responsible for the up. Correct. The road agent visits any road with a road waiver twice a year, spring and fall, and if it requires some kind of work that he notifies the, the southern end residents for and talks to them and says. You know, you sign the road waiver that says it has to be maintained. It needs more gravel here, or there's a culvert that's plugged or something, then it's up to them to, to take care of it. Right. And obviously, it's in the and as you see mine, <laughs> yeah. well taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, third item the ditch line along the west side from the ledge crossing at 1,193 feet plus or minus will flow north to the end of the low area at 677 feet plus or minus ditch lines from beginning to 777 feet to flow south so once again same side of the road except flowing in a different direction right yes you have two ends you have two ends kind of go into the middle where i said i will put the call in right yeah there. yeah okay so they both kind of they slope like this but slope. then they also Mm -hmm. Travel downwards to that okay. the, the lower area. Yep. Okay. And is that part of the? Um, <clears throat> so are you agreeing that there's that that statement that was just read should occur or no no ditch lines? No ditch. No. Okay. All right. If I if it obviously so like I say, if, if I think it needs one, I will put one anyways. Um, it will naturally, yeah. naturally occur. Because everything right now is pretty much every, all the way down. It's, it's high enough that it goes like this. So the ground is higher. Uh, so, except for when you get down in the low. I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to put a cold pipe under. And so by, that, by, by raising the road bed, that kind of creates a natural ditch line. Yeah. Uh, um, would, be the, would be the whole thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. And the first rainstorm you'll know. Whether it worked or not. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying now is it hasn't even washed this out. Right. With right. all the rainstorms. So you're adding gravel to it. You're burning it up higher. So the gravel is still running down wherever. And it's flowing off where it needs to flow. It makes sense to me. I, I, I'm just going to stay out of this kind of discussion because I, I don't agree with putting things in that aren't up to some sort of snuff that, that, that won't handle the water and I see too much of it in town it's going to be their road I understand are we going to be sending buses down there are we going to be sending fire trucks down there if we got an issue down there and I just want to make sure that whatever we put in we'll, we'll handle that because we've already seen this not happen on Hancock right had to go back are you guys responsible for it well we are in the sense that we have to make you guys do it because it's required so we can get our police car down there and our fire trucks. That's what we're responsible for. Oh, and with the agreement that he's saying that they come twice a year, it, we are agreeing to make yeah. sure it happens. He comes down, come yeah. down. If you so if it's, like not, if it's not, if it's not. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It'll be up to us yeah. to make sure it happens. Yeah. And I don't think there will be a bus that goes down there because there's only. Well, it's a dead end road. You're going to have one house made. We almost somebody else was interested in buying both lots and only putting one house. I'd love to do that. You know what I mean? And it's going to be it's a dead end road. Nobody's going to travel it. Right. Mm -hmm. They would have to go to the end of the road if they wanted a bus to come. Down. Yeah. All right, uh, next item, at 677 feet plus or minus, a culvert could be installed 15 inch minimum with flow to the west or build up of the road will push water to the wall on the east side and onto lot 16, possible water easement needed. Now that's where you were talking the about. low spot where the water flows already. It goes down and it flows across over to the right. That's why you saw in the low spot the water in the yep. tracks. Yep. Okay. And that's where we'll go. Yes. Okay. So we're okay. So we're okay with that. Um, driveway at lot 16-1 at 1,256 feet plus or minus, and lot 16-2 at 981 feet plus or minus will not need culverts and will be swaled to allow ditch line water to flow. Yeah, same time. Okay. okay. Moving on then. Uh, driveway for lot 16-1 will be built wide, 20 feet minimum by 40 feet deep minimum to act in conjunction with the 40 foot or road south of driveway to act as a turnaround. So that's the turnaround. Yeah, the 40. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so okay yeah. with that. All right. Roadway to follow 2003 town spec with a travel way of 18 feet wide minimum, shoulder of two feet minimum, center of road to ditch line at 15 feet. How do we address leaving what we've discussed? Trees and... and well, I think if you look at their other letter, they talk about the width. Um, yeah. That's the email, right? That's, that's the email, correct. Yeah. You might be able to come up with some kind of agreement on that. Based on right. Again, the fire chief felt that if, if the road was close to what is there existing on yeah. the improved section, that it would not be a problem for the fire chiefs. Okay, and Mr. Nash, if I read this correctly, you're saying it's 16 and a half feet wide now? Mm hmm Yeah, okay. So, so why don't... Put it this way, if they had a tractor trailer with my roof trusses for my house, yep. they lay flat. Yep. Come from the southerly end and he could not turn around, so he drove straight through that road. Okay. And that was four years ago. Gotcha. Five years ago. Yep. So if a, if a fire truck with this old road can't get through <laughs> on a new road, yeah. better get a new driver. <laughs> um, I'm just looking at the, it's interesting here how this is worded southerly usable portion runs between 13 and a half and 17 and a half feet because I would think as you're going through improving that road depending on trees, rocks, boulders and where the stone wall is that that road will vary in width too hmm. and I would think we it would, it would be useful to have some sort of leeway and not say it has to be blasted through at 16 and a half feet all the way through because you can see how I get your point. How even the southerly end goes wide, low, wide, you know, depending right. on what's going on on the right. sides. And there's some beautiful trees, there's stone wall wanders, yep. there's outcroppings of stone. I'm not sure it's, it's useful to just say big flat uh, if you're going to try and keep the character of the road. So, yep. um, I don't, I don't know if 13 and a half is sufficient for the fire truck, but it seems to be for the southern end. Yeah, so if we said 13 and a half to 17 and a half, that gives you room to... How about 13 and a half to 16 and a half, which is... What it is. Yeah, what it is. Okay. Or, yeah, I, don't, I think, to me, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest concern is the low hanging branches and things like that. But right. I've already got a genie lift at the house, but I will clear sure. Yeah, and that, that, obviously that's, you know, if you got to get dump trucks and stuff in there, mm -hmm. building houses and yep. building lumber and everything, it's going to have to be taken care yeah. of anyway. And yeah, so they're not going to, yeah, they're not going to drive trusses down through, right. even though they've already had like that. You know. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I think that, that something like that, yep. because there are some pretty large trees in here. 
And you know, you start taking down all those big oaks and ashes and you got to hide them on yeah, right a lot of, a lot of tree work there. And just so I'm sure what we're talking about here, when it says uh, the northern the northerly end of Wyden Road, sixteen and a half feet wide, does that include the because the two and a half feet or the two feet on either side, or is it really twenty feet? You know, with the with the shoulders. No, it was it was sixteen. What was the measurement? Sixteen, 16 and the drivables. Of the drivable space, and then I'll put the foot on each side, so we'll bring it to 18. You'll probably have more. That's what it was. They're saying that you have to give your 13 and a half to 17. Yeah. But then so there's, the, there's the, a the current, the current improved section yeah. is, is, is it 16 and a half feet travel yeah. portion, yes. and then yes. foot on each side for a shoulder? Yes. Okay, got it. Okay. Okay. So we'll change that. Second uh, bullet point from shoulder of road to two feet minimum, shoulder of two feet minimum to shoulder of one foot minimum. And then the final bullet point is center of road to ditch line of 15 feet. Yeah, that's 30 that feet. That makes 30 feet what? Yeah, yeah. That's stone walls will be gone. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was looking at when he put that in there. I'm like, how the oh, heck can you do it? <laughs> you just strike that off there. <laughs> so, are you going to make an agreement with your, your purchasers down the road that? You will three of you maintain that, or how's that going to work? Who's going to plow? We'll figure that out when the time comes and we sell it. We'll do an agreement. It'll be stamped and documented and everything else in order to make sure that everybody gets a copy of whatever you guys need. There should be a, a road maintenance agreement yeah. with the town. Well, yeah, it doesn't because sound like we're going to be involved in it at all, are we, on the maintenance? No, we, we shouldn't. No, you're not. No, no, no not at all. all. So then I, I don't really care. But I think you need to figure that out because oh, I I think part of the problem up on Hancock was that they hadn't talked to each other, right? So one oh, no, of I will. I will. I owned the road before, a private road. Yeah. So and I had other people that lived on it. Yeah. So we all, yeah, I, yeah, I know. When you have good neighbors and you let people know ahead of time, if you're buying this land, you know this road is private private <laughs> and that will be in the sale of the land saying it is private road and then i'll let them know we'll come up with an agreement who does what what does where and this and but that. even with private roads are you know uh, a road waiver a road maintenance agreement required to be filed with the town well or it's not required it's not required okay. when i built mine and they thought it was a class six and then I had the road agent. Oh, class out. six work. And that, well, yes. Yeah, if you're a class six, that's it. Total, it should be totally different because the town does all that's that. That's what I was thinking. All so, right. but yeah. Private work. <laughs> all right, so continuing on. So we need to change that dimension to make so sense. center of road yes. to ditch line. Or, or just eliminate it completely. Okay, strike that. If because we've got a road width. Why do you need the center right. of the road to ditch line? Okay. Especially if there's no uh, necessary. Right. All right. Existing roads shown showed at test pit number one, 140 feet from southwest corner of lot 16 one. That was going the other way. Okay. So is that a left old, over from the that's, southern? Yeah, we're not going that way now. Well, don't plan on going the southern end. Understood. So that's, that yeah. So that's what that was. Okay. How about the last one, which is? The two of them are the southern end. They are. Because okay. I have both of them. Understood. OK. All right. And then the final um, road base to be cleared of trees, stumps, organics, and machine raked of six inch and larger cobbles slash rock. 12 inch minimum of base gravel topped with six inch minimum of one and a half CBR gravel at ledge crossing, 1,193 feet, top over with six inch minimum, inch and a half CBR gravel. You want 18 inches of gravel. That's overkill. Okay. That's. I can't I, speak to that. CBR yeah. is just like that's that California standard for crushed rock or whatever. It's yeah. Crushed bank rock. Oh, crushed bank rock. Yeah. So, um, 18 inches is the road standard by the by the time. 
Yeah. These are the road, the, the road agent has the road standards that were developed by the planning board, and he tries to build any new roads to those road standards. Um, there are certainly cases just like this where you don't have to follow those standards. So um, he uses those standards as a matter of fact, yeah. and it's up to the board to make a determination. Mm -hmm. to, what are you proposing, Mr. Mitch? I say 12 inches, where I need it. Really? Total to the thickness. If I need it more in certain areas, because coming down the hill on the the first northerly end is all hard gravel. Mm -hmm. The bottom I will actually put more because it's low. I understand. Going up because it's a solid ledge that goes up and over. I'll up to six inches, and that's what he recommended. He recommended six inches because it's not gonna okay. it's not gonna get ruined. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And stuff. So it varies where you go. Okay and stuff and that's why i already have um the crushed stone which you guys went down and you saw where i went into my property and dumped a big pile of it over there and stuff already and stuff it's to use in areas that i need to use it to make sure everything is solid yeah so, okay so how do we word this so that we're so i i think the the, the first part we're removing all the organic matter and yeah. everything else. And then maybe you could, as far as thickness would vary um, to, to no less than 12 inches. Yep. Okay. That works for me. Yeah. Well, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, no, yes. no, no, yeah. yeah. So I can, go, I can go six inches, right? Right. On over the, the, the ledge. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. no less than six. That makes sense. And that's no less than 12 yeah. inches and uh, except where ledge is right. and that, with a minimal coverage of six inches on the ledge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was that the last point? That was the last point. So how does this now get reworded? Does John have to check it again? So and I will work with my notes, Cal's notes, and John and we'll craft a new one and then have the Nashes look at it, make sure they agree, and then come back and you guys will sign it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We appreciate Thank you. your time. Yeah. Well, sure work. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate right. you guys. Good night, you guys. <laughs> you? Watch out for those whales out there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> whales? Yeah, I asked him about it. I was a fisherman. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> there was a viral video that came out about me. I ran out of the boat. Oh, oh, I saw yeah. it. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. seen it. That's like that. Oh, you better that, check that out. That's in the air. <laughs> wow. All right, guys. Thank you Good so much. All righty. Thank you. All right. I don't blame you. Had enough, John? <laughs> yes. Have a good evening. Okay. Thank you, John. This is just getting snip with a good part. It's time to eat some dinner. That's See you later. Right. Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready to You're cut things up? up? Okay. Come on down. All right. Thank Good you. Night. Bye, Bye Gail. Gail. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Gail, we'll see you on Wednesday, right? Yes. Okay. I, is there anyone there tomorrow? I will be there tomorrow. Just you? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yes, Wednesday for sure. All right. Thank you. So I had emailed out some documents. But you I have them in hard copies. Oh, okay. Do. We want me to just hand them yes. out? Sure. Please. I just want to make sure I keep Did them for myself. No, I didn't print them out. Today? Yeah. Today? What was no. that? Oh, um, no. no, I think I did it last yeah. Thursday. Yeah. I somehow missed that. No worries. I think I, I, think I printed mine. Oh, did you? I, I would love that because I think I only did. I did print Unfortunately, look, Mike, Mike. My color oh, ones are, I know. The glasses will straighten them. I need um, 3D glasses to be my printers. The color row. Oh, you got it? Oh, our color cartridge is running out, so it tries to take right. questions. So we're going to dive deep into charitable exemptions, okay? okay. Um, charitable exemptions are tough. The, the, there's, the, they're never just black and white. So 
Shaker Village to me is one of those gray areas, and I will tell you, for years and years and years, it's always just been exempt under the Everything. charitable exemption. Everything. Okay. Yeah. The lands, the buildings, all of it. Um, a few years ago, when they put, well, I guess this was almost 10 years ago, when they put in the restaurant, mm -hmm. and it was, you know, I had information that it was a private lease. Um, and that a business was running out of there. So that's the restaurant across the road, not the one that was in the... This is one with now the daycare. Got so the preschool. Sorry, the preschool. No. Dewey School. No. Um, at that no. time, we had actually sent them a tax bill for just that portion of the property. I remember we had legal counsel talk to us about that one, but very quickly, um, Shaker Village turned it into, they, they enrolled it into something to do with a culinary school. And that was appropriate. It wiped it right off the tax bill and they got to remain exempt. Last summer, when I heard that the cafe was going in the creamery mm -hmm. building, yep. that sort of sent up a red flag to me. So last September, Ken was there, building inspector, Chief Gamash. Yep. We all went over there and took a pretty extensive tour of, of all of the buildings um and i asked the questions that i that i needed to ask and what i walked away with um i detailed on the sheet that says fine that's yes okay every year every year annually um shaker village has to send in an a9 form and an and a um, a12 they are a state form one of them is applying for the exemption, for the charitable exemption, and then the other one is sort of a financial statement where they have to prove that they are deserving of this charitable exemption. And there are certain things that I have to look for through all of that um, to make sure that it goes in line with the RSA on charitable exemptions and New Hampshire's definition of charitable. So everything that I found I put on, I detailed on that sheet um, of areas that I thought would no longer qualify under a charitable exemption. So there's five. Um, and and I, what I didn't understand when I looked at this is all the acres of vacant land up at the top. You didn't have a problem with those? Or you <laughs> And if you did, I couldn't understand what the problem Let's was. Let's call it a gray area. Okay. They, um, I don't have all of the current use information from 1982, but in 1982, all of Shaker Village land, all of the fields up there was enrolled in current use. So that wouldn't lead me to believe, but I don't know, let me, let me back up, because I don't know really what the status of that property was back in 1982. Were there still Shakers living? One there? or two, right? 96, I think, was the last year. Sister Doug? Yeah. Because when we moved here in 90, there were still two. Okay. All right. I would think if they enrolled it in current use, they knew that they were subject to taxation on it. Um, it has since, I don't know when, been wiped off of the tax roll, and it all sits mm. in there as um, exempt lands. With no current use change being applied tax? to it. Just wiped no, it's just it's just wiped off as 100% as Charitable exempt. Yes, yes. And then the other buildings, um, the horse barn, and, and all of the buildings up there are numbered and have names. So mm -hmm. I'm just stuck with the numbers and the names. Mm -hmm. um, the horse barn is used for private functions, weddings, etc. Um, Andy's apartment is is located in the trustees office. Is that what they call that building? Mm -hmm. In the, the basement building. level. The brick building. The brick building. Yeah. Um, when I spoke across the road or on the, well, I mean, across the, across the, road. the road. Yep. Um, when yeah, I spoke to Todd, who had yeah. given us a tour of that, he had told me yeah. that Andy is not an employee of Shaker Village. He at one time was the master gardener there. He no longer is the master gardener there. He grows stuff at the village. Oh, so that's Andy Messenger? Who's there now? Andy's apartment? I don't, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, and then, and then to go on, the East House was used as the director's house. 
Um, at that time, and if you go up back up to the top, I give a little blurb there about how the director um, on their IRS forms is named as, as an, an officer. officer. Yeah. So that sort of is in direct contradiction of, of the RSA. So, hmm. Interesting. yeah, I compiled this all together um, and we sent Shaker Village a tax bill. And that tax bill equated to about $7,000. Seven thousand dollars and nine dollars I have jobs. And yep. that would only be for half the year. Shaker okay. Village would get another $7,000 um, tax bill at the end of this tax Which year. is a, one question that I had when yes. and their um, rebuttal to all of this yes. was, that they did not receive a formal notice of the change from exempt to non-exempt until they got the bill and I was, do we have to give them formal notice? We don't. And quite honestly, I, I sort of didn't want to engage in an appeal before a bill had even gone out. Okay, I just didn't know if we would, if we were required. I would have assumed if we were required to, you would have. So and that's but. just it too. In in their rebuttal, they are wishing to appeal, but but properly they can't appeal this tax bill. Um, they can ask the select board for reconsideration. Um, you can't appeal until your final notice of tax. So they would have to actually receive their December tax bill, pay it or not pay it, however they want to do it, and then follow the appeal process that they have until March 1st to file their abatement with the town, a formal abatement. And, um, and then from there, if the town denied the abatement application, then, they, then prior to September 1st of 2025, um, they could file with the Board of Tax and Land Appeals or Superior Court. So are they hoping by this rebuttal to not even have the tax bill go out? I think, I think they're hoping that um, with their rebuttal, the select board would decide that, that how they state that they're using the buildings at Shaker Village now as of this year, because they've had some changes over the year, um, that it would put them back as exempt status. So, if, but the tax bill is how the buildings were, have been used in the past mm -hmm. year. So it's, it's Basically. hard, it's hard because you still have to do your assessing as of April 1st. And when they apply for their exemption every year yeah. um, by April, they're applying for the exempt status for the upcoming mm -hmm. year tax year. Gotcha. And at that point, one of the points was at that point when they were they were the, the um, their executive tax. district dis yes. director was listed as officer. Yes, yes, but they also said that as of that time that house was vacant because the executive director had already gone. Right. Um, the cafe had already stopped. Yeah, the cafe, yeah, the cafe yeah. was no longer operating. Um, the, and, and the two barns that were holding private functions um, are no longer being rented. Hmm. And they're currently still without a director, right? Yes. Uh, so they have not named a director. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's coming. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if we're going to get this settled tonight. Um, no. It, because I also included in here some case law for you um, to go through and, and the four factors that, you know, it's a four factor test that, that gets way to, to determine if something falls under charitable. Because like I said, it, it, isn't, it isn't black and white. It's a lot of discretion and going, okay, does it, is it for the public welfare, you know, the public good? Um, all of those sorts of things. I have, I will tell you, Shaker Village has always been very good about sending in their paperwork. Um, so I have their restated articles of agreement and in, in all of that. Um, I didn't want to bombard you guys with paperwork, but. Where's the, um, oh, I didn't print, I didn't print out the one with the case law. Um, because it's I interesting if, you know. Do you want my copy? Yeah, can I just yeah. I read it all before I got here, but I forgot this. Thank you. Maybe. Um, 
So, if when you assessed it, when you actually physically went out and looked at the barn, like the north um, barn that was still being used for weddings and mm -hmm. functions at that time? Yeah. Okay, but now they're saying it's no longer being used for that function? Correct. As of this moment, but that's not precluding them from suddenly using it for that purpose? Right. I don't, I mean, and that's I don't. the other thing with the charitable exemption is there really is no threshold as far as um, if they rent out that space to nonprofits 75% of the time, but 25% of the time they hold private weddings and events there, the town can decide if they feel as though they've, they've met the burden and it could be exempted 100% as but a charity. But how do you know? <laughs> okay. Yep. You're right. Here's the gray area. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, again, the, um, you know, the, um, you know, I, I looked at their, their uh, reasoning for the, for, for the uh, gardener being, yes. you know, that the, if they yeah. are required to have a, um, where is it? The garden bar? No. Uh, it was that for Andy's apartment at number fifteen? It's the last. It's the last one. The farmer who preferred, prefers an independent contractor status yes. to fulfills the village mandate. Village mandate to maintain a garden. In but, exchange, yeah. but it's not necessarily a, a shaker garden or shaker inspired or shaker practices. I mean, we uh, he's got beautiful stuff. He sells at the right. farmers market. He's a certified organic farmer. Yeah. It's wonderful. But does that meet their and I will tell you, I think this I is where you guys might be a little bit more knowledgeable of the, the history of Shaker Village, the practices that have gone on there. Um, I only look at it every year just for this purpose. Um, I'm not up on all of the events that have taken place there or how it's changed or grown over the years. Or I mean, all, all we can rely on from this anyway is how they say they are currently and not planning to use, right? But that doesn't does that weigh in on how you assessed it as of April, how they were using it then? Does that does that change how the tax bill might be for this year? And would that would the status change again if they don't use it? Yes, I mean, in fact, the only thing I can say when they fill out their A nine form every year, they have every opportunity to get very detailed in what buildings they qualify, what buildings yeah. they're applying for this exemption, um, their primary use and duration. Um, I've been very lackadaisical with this paperwork over the years. Um, I mean, this was what they filled out last, this past year, and it literally just says one map and lot number, 10 acres, museum, education, and preservation. And that is it. Uh, so, I mean, I know that going forward, I can certainly do a better job of requiring a more detailed list of what buildings do you have, what are you using them for? What kind of education? What kind of? We, we've sent two uh, letters to the liquor commissioner, one in May and one in June, allowing um, anytime, anytime they want to sell alcohol up there, mm -hmm. the, the caterer has to get a letter from the municipality that is aware that they're selling liquor. And so there's been two events, again, one in May and one in June, that we've had to send letters to the vendors, which is a letter to the Liquor Commission saying that, that they're aware we are they're selling alcohol up there. It doesn't say what the event is, but there's been two events with it so far this year where they're selling alcohol. Yeah, that's easy. I mean, one of them was like the Simply Shaker, which is in the beginning of the and, year. And the I don't season. know where the event was or what building it was yeah. in or, or anything, but just... From members yeah. and stuff. I think that it might could be a charitable thing or whatever, yeah. an auction. Yeah. Um, but but there are there are events going on up there that, that they do have caterers coming in. Yeah. So how do we um, go from this point forward? Well, We've got all this excellent information, both sure. yours and theirs, so because theirs is very specific about how they think. So I would, I would tell you right now, you guys have the opportunity to reconsider the tax bill that has been sent to them if you feel as though um, what David Katz has supplied is 
sufficient enough to, to approve the charitable status and change it all back to um, exempt based on what he said um, or we sort of do nothing and we issue a bill in December and then let just that formal appeal process start if they so choose I personally yes. want to read through this all again because I, I went through I it once just afternoon exactly. and went okay yeah and I have and I have no problem meeting on this I, mean, I, I will tell you I am not an expert in institutional exemptions um, I just don't have enough experience in all the different types of charitable properties that there could be um, I did reach out to our Department of Revenue and asked if they would come to the meeting tonight just to give us some clarity on um, on the RSAs not make a decision mm -hmm. for us but just give us some clarity on the RSAs and they just kind of let me know that they don't do that <laughs> <laughs> sorry well, but don't do that yes, don't do I didn't that. say anything I literally didn't even respond back yeah. so um, no I mean there is case but do they have do they have a department like um, NHMA if you have a question you can say they are the Take Department of Revenue property appraisal but you can they there, oversee what I do right but is there a, but they some, won't give us any advice they're, they're the advisory overseas. only oh yeah. but in this case they they're not advisory they, don't they want to could advise. not advise yeah so not helping yeah i am absolutely willing to show you the case law that i have on this um all all of the research that i've done and read and but i mean you just don't have an exact case of a shape well let me put it to you this way enfield there I don't know if they call it Shaker Village, but there's Shaker property mm -hmm. over there. Um, they exempt everything. I looked at every single card. It's all exempted. And I, I myself have attended a private wedding in one of those barns before. So. Yeah. Um, the pilot yearly So I was, was going to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. We have a, a payment in lieu of taxes that they give us every year for $2,000. They paid it in April for on April first. Their tax bill was seven thousand and nine dollars. We got a check from them for these taxes for five thousand and nine dollars. So, so they're yeah. using they're using the payment in lieu of taxes and the check they sent us to pay their taxes. Which, talking to the tax collector, that doesn't work. <laughs> How do you They're use the payment in lieu of taxes to pay for taxes? Correct. Right. They're two different things. So right now, they have unpaid taxes in the amount of $2,000 on this tax bill, which is uh, generating interest and penalties. From, and so that's the... This, um, is the, this is the June... June tax bill. tax bill. And what have they done in the past? What did they do with last... We did this tax, tax bill last year. So they didn't get one. So this, they is don't, this is their first tax bill for this for June. And the second one, no, there will be a second one if we do nothing in, in November. December, November for December. Yeah. So if I wanted to get a, a, a longer explanation, not right here and now, about what pilot and in lieu of taxes entails, who do I ask, Sam? Because what? why were they paying? I don't understand what in lieu of taxes. A lot of a lot of uh, exempt properties, the spruces, for instance. Yeah. Um, they use town services. Yeah. The town plows the road. All the things that the town, the reason the town collects taxes, a lot of those, those services still exist for those exempt properties. So in order to help out the municipality, these exempt organizations will give a payment in lieu of taxes. And who decides how, what that payment is? That the is organization that, or the town? That's negotiated between the okay. town, the municipality, and the, and the organization. Um, some don't. Um, I know that, like in the town of Boston, all the county buildings, those are all exempt buildings. The nursing home, the, the county jail, all those all those structures up there are exempt. Same thing for the city of Concord. Exempt, all exempt, the, and no All the state taxes. buildings are exempt. And they do not pay, the city of Concord does not collect any money from the state 
for it, all, any of that state property that the state owns. So same thing with, with Bosco and with the county. So, so at some point we had a negotiation with Shaker Village to figure out what they were doing. Negotiation with Shaker yeah. Village. Okay. Yeah. 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 As a matter of fact, not to get too off topic, but uh, the RSA that the Spruces falls under actually states in it that you will negotiate, you will, but you shall negotiate a payment in lieu of taxes with them every single year. Hmm. And if they don't. How does that read? If they don't, if they don't agree with what the town says, this is what we'd like you to pay. Uh, they have to pay a minimum of ten percent. There's a formula that lays it, it lays it right out there of what it's supposed to be. Ten percent of what the actual tax would be if it was just on the tax roll. And is mm -hmm. there such a requirement on Jacob Village? Should they be there in lieu of taxes be renegotiated every? We haven't. Yeah. We haven't, but what does it say? Like you it, say, doesn't say it doesn't say no. anything. It doesn't say no. No. Um, Shaker Village, yeah, Shaker Village solely falls under seventy two, twenty three, and twenty three I. Okay. There were a few years that they did not pay it, and um, I think it was when they were in the transition of the executive director, and yeah. the town reminded them. <laughs> Um, that they had historically paid it. Yeah, and I they, think they, I chased them down for paperwork those few years. Did they pay in arrears? No. They just paid going forward. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know they mm -hmm. came down at one point and reshingled the bandstand, I believe, and put new handrails on it, didn't they? And a little taxes, I believe. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I know Dale grumbles about it because they didn't do what was there. He changed things. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, so the, so the big thing with um, a charitable property under 7223 is the own, used, and occupied by them directly for the purpose of which they are established. So uh, every single one of those buildings up there has to be looked at in that manner, own, used, and occupied for the purpose. So even the restaurant that at one point was um, run or used by the culinary school. Yes, that doesn't count necessarily because it's not a shape. It's not it a only, purpose school. It only would in that this RSA continues on to say unless you have a entity or organization in that building that would qualify for the exemption on its own. For its own exemption. Yeah, so, like so the, the non exempt property, property can go into another non exempt okay. property. Not, not as as Even if the exemptions, exemptions are different. It's, yes. Okay. Yes. Like a culinary yes. school is obviously not yes. a shaker. But, yes. okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot more. What a great job. Mandy, <laughs> <laughs> when you. Um, when you guys walked through, yeah. you only found Andy living there, correct? That was the only... That was Andy's apartment. There, In that building, there are a few other apartments right. um, that were... The information that was told to me was that they were artists in residence um, or if visitors came to do something at the village, that's where they were put. Did you get into the apartments? I'm just curious. No, no, no. no. Because that's where I'm trying to think of the name of the woman who lived there who was almost like a caretaker. There's no more caretaker role there. Um, not that, no, not that I recall. There's no one staying other than Andy living uh, on the property. So there's, so there's Todd um, Maffaletto. He yeah. is the one right. who took He's us there. around. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. he He's has an apartment yeah. above the, the creamery building, the yeah. cafe. Right. Um, but he did tell me shortly after our visit that Shaker Village made his apartment or residence a requirement of the job mm. to live there. Okay. Well, that's what they're also saying about the executive director, correct? Correct. That since that's why it's not pecuniary. However, you say that word. Well, pecuniary. Yeah. The the problem that I have with that is that it, historically, every year when they send in their IRS forms they um, check off the executive director as an officer. Yeah. And that, that's in direct contradiction of the RSA. Which, of course, they're saying they had to check that box. So, correct. 
And they also said that they don't think I should use the IRS form to decide, but I don't know, it, I, and believe me, I But why wouldn't you? I don't know any other place where um, the officers are labeled. Right. So Interesting. Yeah. All right. Um, so, so yes, if any of you would ever like to come into my office and sit down with a file and... The light reading? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I think this is a lot of information to to digest. Um, so I, I think we need to table it for now and yeah. invite Mandy back at a, a later date. Well, did we also, um, and I think um, David Katz's letter says he would like to come in and yeah, uh, I was gonna, say I was his gonna side. Mention that, that, that they would like to meet with you. Yeah. I, I felt it would be more appropriate to have Mandy here yeah. to fill yeah. you in on yes. her research and her work. And I also don't know, um, I know I would feel comforted by town council, but that's just me. Um, and only because there are so many different little attributes to this. Yep. And I'm not, well, I should say that I'm not a tax professional. Technically, I am. But I'm not like an accounting tax professional on yeah. nonprofit status. Yep. <laughs> well, and then would, would town council be the person to weigh in on it? You need a tax person more than a town council person, correct? They have, the law firm that we deal with has uh, lawyers that specialize oh, they must have. in yeah, different, they have. different areas of municipal law, whether personnel or land use or... Uh, a charitable? Yeah, I would hope so. I, there I would is, guess, yeah. There is more and more case law on this coming down, coming down the if, like if not in the past year, in the past couple of years, it's yeah. continuing on. Um, and only because these things got ignored in towns for years and years and years. And then the Board of Tax and Land Appeals started to kind of hold these towns on the fire and say, you know, yeah. why would you do this charitable? Yeah. So maybe a plan to move forward would be to invite Mr. Katz. And then after that, we can, we we'll think, you know, certainly in the meantime, anybody yeah. that, that has time and the inclination can come see Mandy. Okay. Would we want um, would we want whatever uh, tax department from our council weigh in first so that we have that information even before we hear what Mr. Katz has to say? Does it matter the order? I think he's weighed in, or they Shaker Village has weighed in with their rebuttal. Yeah. Um, I mean, so rather I mean, we can send it. all of this to our law firm and see if they have an opinion one way or the other, and you guys can decide yeah. what to do that or. We did that with the restaurant. I still have the paperwork on that. And that's all they did was they, they just sort of rendered an opinion that, you know, it, it does appear to be within the town's rights to, you know. Yeah. To be, just, you know, to be a little back up, so. Do we have enough in the in the legal line? I, well, you know, that's, I mean, that's just it. Like I said, I mean, really, they can't do, they can't start their formal appeal until their final notice of tax, which would be their tax bill that they're going to receive yeah, in November, yeah. December. Um, so the, technically, this isn't really something that we have to dive into until next year. Yeah. And so, go ahead. Sorry. So the rest of us are going to see a fairly large tax increase coming, right? School tax. School tax. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would they see the same thing on theirs, or how would that work? Yeah. It's the total tax rate. Yeah. 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 I mean, what they're paying taxes on is a is a portion of right. that property. Still, I mean, I'm sure 97 percent of it is still exempt from taxation. Right. I would like to work with them though on the current use. Um, well, it seems to be a big of everybody to get that nailed down. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't mind putting this off for several reasons. Um, not least of which is see how the new executive director, which I think is shortly, uh, weighs in on yes. this, yep. um, and what direction they want to yeah. uh, go in dealing with the town on matters such as this. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and also, it's it cannot go unsaid that knowing that Shaker Village is always strapped for cash, yeah. I'm sure they would appreciate not having tax bill. Right. Um, if it's doable, I don't know, but I, I think all those things weighing together means not a hasty decision okay. on this one. Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, agree, agree. Yeah. Yeah. 
But thank you for, for going out and touring and looking at all this. And I think well, it was I really helpful. Well, I haven't this information well enough. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, like you said. There was a lot. There's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. Colored inks. What's that? Colored inks. Oh, just the black. Yeah. Mine are highlighted. Oh, I'll tell you that. Yeah. 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 I got the yellow all over here. I think, I, I think that was it. It was really helpful, though, also to have... Um, I'm assuming that this one, Canterbury Shaker Village Appeal of Property Assessments and Tax, was very helpful for you too to have them spell out how they believe or how they present. And Absolutely. So, so, so and that and that was a a the result of David Katz and I speaking over the phone, and I emailed him everything that I had. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, he was able to kind of sort of form a rebuttal from that information. So yeah, so yeah. it makes, I mean, I'd like to, this is one side of it, this all makes sense, but yeah, you know, how that jives with everything else, I don't yet know, but it was, it's really handy to have all this. Yeah. Great. Great. So, how would you like us to see? When are we going to start working on how to communicate with Mr. Cast at some point? Yeah. What? When are we going to be starting to work on budgets and stuff like that? Uh, I was going to bring up that I'd like to get the budget committee in the first meeting in December. I mean, September. September. Yeah. So we should have it maybe decided before that, or does it matter? If the tax bill goes out in December? Mm -hmm. The tax bill goes out in December. I mean, you can, as Mandy said, the, the formal appeal process can be put off until 2025. It'll probably that, take us that long to figure it out. Um, well, and, yeah, and, yeah, I think it's going to take a while. Yeah, you know, it, we can say that that look, we're going to take them, take this under advisement. And right. If you want to invite them in and chat with them, you can. Uh, but then take it under advisement, and, yeah. and that most likely, uh, and depending, the, the formal appeal process does not start until 2025, yeah. and we'll have a decision by then. That's what. That's kind of what I had envisioned. Is if you guys didn't immediately say no, let's let's change it back to exempt that we would just follow up with a letter to him, letting him know of the actual appeal process. Yeah, and other than the yeah. they've been advised on the um, the pilot not being applied to their taxes, right? They're aware. I have not done that. Yet. Okay. So if we do not, if we change nothing, they'll get a December tax bill. And then the appeal process starts. Mm -hmm. But what happens about the June tax bill? So there's there's technically two thousand dollars that have not been paid. Um, again, it's generating interest and penalties that can be abated by the board of selectmen uh, when the time comes. Uh, if if you feel that that's necessary, I can let them know that. That just because they filed the pilot or paid the pilot in April, that does not have any effect on the June tax bill that they receive, um, and and that they're generating that, uh, interest and penalties. Um, it's up to you guys how you want us to handle it. So I think it, I think in the interest of fairness and transparency, we should advise them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's that's the fairest. Can think to, to do. I would like to ask Mr. Katz to come in, but I think also in the meantime, we do send everything to our attorney okay. and, and have them get started looking at it. Okay. And then, as, as I think we're all in agreement, this is not going to be a quick decision. This is going to be a, okay. a lot of research and some back and forth. It just, it just seems um, kind of unfortunate that there's a June tax bill. And then the December one is the one that we're going to send to wait on. and wait on, and that's yeah. when the appeals process starts. And you know, does does anything go happen? Say say, it. all right, that's that's a discussion for another day. Whatever happens with the appeal process, does that affect in arrears anything they may have paid or not paid in June, or does the June tax bill stand by itself? Well, we no, sir. okay. Sure. Your the yeah. June tax bill is almost like a good faith payment that you make to the town where your December tax bill is your actual tax bill. Got it. June is just a part of credit for the year. So the fact that it's two grand short is not as big a deal as it might be otherwise. Right. right. Okay. So, right. yeah, you. whatever you, you just said, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mandy. Can I stop? Yeah.
Little bit of a story. Get to that. Probably here. Let's more. see. We're, we're, we're here on the agenda. Oh my god. Busy night. Thank you, Mandy. Good night, Mandy. Say hello to Belly Gun. Will do. All right, so that brings us to new business, then, right? Yeah, unless you want to do the business. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Yes, and thank you for bringing me back yes, to that. Yes. Check those. Somewhere, I know Cal left me. That was in the blue folder. I have the blue folder. Not from my head. So, each of you have it in your colorful folders. I can right. put the, the public ones and the executive session yep. ones together. Yep. All right, so I'm going to try to, we're going to try something new and see if we can can cut our time a little bit. I'm gonna make a motion to approve the public minutes from July 15, July 23, and July 30th as amended. Um, and the amendment is on line 236 of the July 15th. I spelled Dale Caswell wrong. Ah, so I'm just gonna fix that. Up. I, see. I also no. did have one question on the, uh, the 15th minutes, the minutes of the 15th. All right, just line. Uh, 127 and also 152 uh, to 154. I don't know if they need to say the same thing. Um, line 127 is all three sites would provide 100% of the power needed, uh, which, which might have been what he said, but is not actually, if you look at 152 to 154, um, the with its the, any site that's approved would be 100 percent of the town's municipal needs with the solar panels we already have so it, right. it's like because um tom franco said that the um the grant you couldn't apply for yeah is this correct ken you would know i think so it's it's like it can't be a hundred percent of the entire town's needs you see, so what you know, you I don't exactly. I'm just saying um, that um, all three sites would provide like 100% of the. So we either need to rephrase that or strike that because it says it later. Yes. Well, then we're and almost, they're only proposing two two sites now. At the time, we were proposing three. Okay. Yeah, we so can't, we can't only, do a lot. Okay. Yeah. But the only the only thing that I wanted to make clear is that the everything that was proposed. It was a hundred percent of the municipal needs. If when it when you included what the ten percent that the current panels are already generating, and it says that in line one fifty two to one fifty four, it just seems like they should match. Right. The grant requires the array. Uh, however, the new array plus the power from the old array would cover one hundred percent of the current municipal usage, and that's all. But, so are you happy with that? I'm happy with that one, yes. Okay, so what are you suggesting we correct? Uh, 127. Um, so suggest a correction. So um, can I offer a? Yes, please So do. all three sites would provide 100% of the power needed, comma, um, in, combination in, in combination with the existing, the existing array. array. Yes. Sounds good to me. Yes, please. Okay. And then those two sections agree. That's all. And that was the only change. Cool. All right. So. So, um, so your motion is still the same. I was just going to say. As amended. As amended. Those two yeah. And your your typo. Yes. I'm looking for a second. So moved. All those in favor. All right. All right. All right. All right. Moving on. So uh, we're looking at the non-public meeting minutes from July 15th. And July 23rd. Looking for any amendments. I saw nothing in those. Can't take anything from you? No, that's good. All right, then I'll make a motion to approve the non public meeting minutes from July 15th and July 23rd. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then the motion to seal the minutes is already in the minutes, so we don't need to do that again. Oh, you need this back, don't you? And I do want the executive session ones back. And somewhere in there, you should also have the um, special town meeting ones that Sam 
that I think I only put a copy in your folder, um, Scott. Okay. It's a single page. Yep. Um, all right. You just so, to all right. So I'll pass that so everybody can take a look. And then I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, July 15th special town meeting procedure report. So moved. All those in favor? Seconded. Yes. Aye. 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 Sorry, I made the motion, so. Okay. So that's really what we're going to do. Sounds good to me. Thank you, sir. I haven't seen you. This is the most succinct bunch of minutes I think I've ever read. It was a very short meeting. Lovely. All right. All right. And then, so we're through then. Previous minutes approval. Moving on to new business. Mm -hmm. Okay. So our first item is request for camping at the end of West Road. Yes. Uh, back in June, I got a request for camping uh, from by the Medlin Order. The yeah, the uh, uh, Masons. Yeah. No. Masonic Lodge in in uh, Hillsboro. No. Um, I sent this to the. Conservation Commission. I remember. They yeah. said that they uh, didn't have a problem with it as long as there was no campfires or carry in and carry out. Um, it said here in his request. Um, let's see. The highly skilled outdoorsmen and conservation have the utmost respect for the environment. Not only do you decide to leave no trace, you have to look to make a better place. Thank you for your consideration. So, again, um, the only thing conservation said was no campfires and... And, um, and no open pit fires, but like they could use camp stuff. Yeah, no, no campfires mm -hmm. and, and carry in and carry out. Everything, everything, especially human waste, yeah. since there would yeah. be 15 people. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so down the river end of the thing? Yes, yeah, down at the end of West Road, down uh, by where the old bridge was. Yeah. No. Yeah. They got a campground or a place well, there's, there's a beach there that they okay. pull up and camp on. Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. it's public property. It's not. It's the town property, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 But but that the conservation talked about that like last month. Did that? Did their concerns go to the Masons? Have they replied? I haven't. I have not sent. I brought to you guys. You the board of selectmen are the ones that authorize any kind of camping or. Being like that on public land. Oh, okay. Conservation is advisory only. Right. Oh, all right. So, do we need a motion? Yes, we need a motion right. to so decide whether you're going to allow it and if there's any restrictions. All right. So, I'll make a motion that we allow it okay. with the restrictions of no open fires mm -hmm. and carry in, carry out. Um, everything that. that right. As advised by the Conservation Commission. Yep, so moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, next item. Request for member source for extended hours of work on transmission lines. I thought we dealt with that. Uh, they want another one. Oh. <laughs> uh, they are looking for the weeks of August 5th and September 10th. Uh, August 5th is this week, so yeah. they're looking for 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Sundays as needed. Uh, it would not be every day. And they don't plan on Sundays. We would like that permission should they come across an unexpected delay. Uh, the crews will be pulling a wire up to onto the new structures. The equipment used would be bucket trucks and the wire roller to pull the wire across the stands. So no heavy equipment, just the trucks and yeah. the rollers are in place. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So. And um, why do they need to request an extended hours from us to do that? Because when their regular work hours are Monday through Friday, and I believe they quit at five o'clock, and it is their regular work hours. So this is uh, this is a, a change from when they started the project. We got notification of what their work hours would be, right. and said that if there was anything outside that, they would notify us. Oh, so they're just no, they're they're just saying they're going to be working longer. In case residents ask. 
It's not like you they don't ask you if it's okay. Yeah. Um, we give you permission. No, I realize that, but why? what are we giving permission for? The fact that they're just going to be there longer than they thought they were in the beginning during the day? It's not louder or anything. No. Right? no okay. No. But well, it's and they're only going to be using... I mean, they have they have different equipment that they use on different parts of the project, but they're not going to be using cranes or anything like that right. to make a lot of noise. Right. Okay. They're just going to be using the trucks to pull them. And that doesn't affect um, uh, the police force or anything? We don't have any flaggers or people or no, they anything? Have they do everything? All right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, go ever source. So that's okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Do we need to motion it, second it, and vote no. it, or just okay? No, just okay. Okay. All right. Next item correspondence from Jesse Tichko regarding Kimball Pond mowing. Yes. Uh, there was a group that had uh, Jesse Tichko as this uh, library summer reading program fishing day every year yeah. well, for the past few years. And uh, she reached out a couple weeks ago or a couple weeks before and asked if uh, the highway department could mow the lawn and everything around there, and they yep. did. Yep. And uh, she just wanted to make sure that, she said thank you, wanted the board of selectmen to know that they did a great job, and so thank you very much. Very was good. that Bowden who was mowing probably? Yes, it was Bowden. Bowden mm -hmm. mows everything, he's been doing a great job. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Bowden. Cool. All right, next item, correspondence from Conservation Commission regarding Riverlands maintenance. Did yeah, we have that to read? Oh, yeah, yeah. Your new folder. business folder. Um, not your folder, that's just oh, no. yeah, the new business. Yeah. Back of ours. Gotcha. Oh, that's struggling. They're going to be doing some native sound. Oh, that's yeah. this. Okay. Is there another work day? Not so far. Looks like they're just. I made that advising. case, but I'm only kidding. They're working. They're working so far. Okay. It looks like they're advising us that they will be doing work, so we probably will turn into a work day. Well, so, um, they're very good at, at um, wanting to do it in the fall when there's less bugs. Makes sense. To get more people to do it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh yes. And I'll discuss it the last evening. Does Brian and I Christensen live in town? No. When he said Pembroke? Uh, I think so. Okay. Yeah, something close by. Okay. Yeah. There's just a Christensen yeah. up on the Baptist Road. I was wondering if that's so. yeah. All right. Next item is a request from Casa of New Hampshire for funds. Hmm. So I'll read you guys. It's a very short email. Um, from the Casa of New Hampshire, which they don't say what that organization is. Mm -hmm. No, it's no it's court appointed. Children, yeah. No, court appointed. I can never remember, Ellen. No. Um, it's, the, it's the people who um, volunteer, if you volunteer to be a court, court appointed, appointed special advocate. There you go. Court appointed. Yeah. I never get it right. Court yeah. appointed special advocate if children have been taken yeah. from a family and they need somebody to. Gotcha. All right, so it says, good morning. Could you tell me who is the appropriate person to send funding requests to for the town of Canterbury? Do you require a warrant article? Is there a form for us to fill out? Any information you provide would be helpful. Thank you. Regards from Melissa, the Executive Assistant, Casa of New Hampshire. So in our budget, in our budget, we have uh, uh, in the welfare section, we support the community action program of Merrimack County, mm -hmm. um, and this organization is a, another charitable organization <laughs> somewhere that is asking for um, support. They do not specify how much money, yeah. but uh, you know, I mean, we put a thousand dollars in the budget next year for Casa, and 
if that's what you guys want to do, it passes through the budget process and so be it. Okay. If we have the ability to do it, that's an excellent organization that does really important work. Yeah. So why don't we table this until we I would say through the meet budget, budget process. committee in yeah. September, hopefully, and then yeah. talk to talk about them. Yeah. Um, so I can contact them and let them know that that uh, that we'll be discussing on our budget committee and yeah. we'll keep them updated. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah, it's a great organization. Yeah. And then for all three of us, uh, the just a reminder on the elections coming up, September 10th and November 5th. Some, so, what does say, some wiggle and absolutely mean? <laughs> oh, so that was the note that Sam was telling me that he wanted this on the agenda. Um, okay. The September 10th, oh, for technically all three of you need to be there for yep. the entire thing. Yep. You cannot leave and you yep. have to, yeah, to get a, um, yeah. And so September 10th, he said, like, if there's an emergency or something, you, you can have some wiggle room. But on November 5th, we need to follow everything as strictly as humanly possible. Okay. So you really, really, really have to be there. You well, really, really, really have to be there. November. Don't go in the hospital. Like, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, can we zoom in from the hospital? Yeah. I don't think happen. so. But, um, you have to shut other people in. I was just gonna say, there is a provision to a point, yes. if okay. God forbid something does happen, yes. which I hope it doesn't to anyone here, uh, but there is a provision to handle it. Jim Miller and I, Discussion at one of the elections about that, that possibility. So, I have two additions to the new business. Okay. One is, uh, and I mentioned it before, um, the September um, selectmen's meetings are the 9th and the 23rd. Yep. Uh, I would like to have the budget committee in on the 9th. Okay. Yep. 9th and 20th. 9th and 23rd. Why not the 2nd and the 16th? Because the 2nd is Labor Day. Oh. <laughs> of course. Okay, so 9th and 23rd. Do yes. you want a red pen? No, what I really need is an eraser, but I'll figure it out. 23rd. Oh, you need an eraser? Oh, okay. I've got an eraser. Yep, it's in there. It's in there somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 somewhere. And then the next item on new business is. Uh, 125 West Road, which is the old gas station at exit 18. Yeah. Um, I got several phone calls today. I got a visit from a past selectman, past planning board member. Um, they're digging up and replacing the tanks down there. I spoke with the engineer, um, the civil engineer that's in charge of the operation. Uh, They are replacing the tanks in kind. They, um, the tanks that were there were not leaking. They did not pass the DES test, but they weren't leaking. However, that is a water protection area in the town. Um, and our zoning does not allow underground tanks there. Um, they were there when that zoning went in, so they were allowed to stay. Um, I had that conversation with the engineer. We kind of went back and forth. Uh, I put a phone call in to Jim Week, who's the chair of the ZBA. Uh, I'm hoping to hear from him in the next couple of days. They were scheduled to start putting in the um, sheeting underneath the tank on Wednesday or Thursday. So I told him we probably should hold off on that. <laughs> yeah. um, I did tell them that the town was didn't, was highly in favor of the, the business going back in. Uh, everybody I've spoken to and everybody I've heard from would like to see it there, but there are certain rules and zoning ordinances that we have to follow. So um, I'll wait to hear from Jim Week and talk to him, and, and then we'll, I guess we'll go from there. So when I drove down there this afternoon to look, um, it looks like they're also digging up the, if you're looking at the building, the right-hand side, is that where the septic was? No, the septic was on the left-hand side. The tanks are on the left? Why are they digging on the, the right? The tanks are on the right-hand side. The septic is on the left-hand side. Oh, so even though the pumps are out front, the tanks are all the way around the side? Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're not digging the tanks up yet. The tanks are just standing there. They've dug a hole for the new ones, I'm guessing. I, the yeah, they haven't pulled the old tanks out. 
They just put all it I know is there's a the huge excavation down on the right. Where they, I think we we'll put these things. Oh, all right. Hmm. I think the challenge of the town is that if we want to use our rules, we should, I think. It, it has to be an above grade storage container that holds those tanks so there's no leakage out of that area. And I, I told him that and he said there's absolutely no room for that on that property. Well, that's, I said, well, yeah. I, I don't know what to tell you on that. I said, I'm gonna talk to the zoning board uh, chair and see how he feels it because it would require a variance if they wanted to put them on the ground. And if that's the case, how did they get in there in the first place? It's because of the water area shed protection area. Since the, the tanks were in there. Uh, they were in there when the zoning was here. Okay. So does grandfathering have, is that what they're claiming? I didn't say, he said they were facing the in kind and he didn't feel that, that it was necessary for there. So I said, well, we'll talk to the CBA <laughs> chair and see what he feels. All right, so that was the engineer. What about the owner? I, I haven't spoken with the owner. Okay. If you want to see what the rules are, they're at the end of the zoning regulations under the watershed protection area. Okay, that's good to know. So those are the two new items, and then we have the, the old, old business. Yep. So in old business, I have the capital area uh, solid waste committee that I went to the meeting. Um, went fairly quickly. There was some discussion on the, uh, the big discussion point was the property uh, that the, that the co-op owns. Um, and uh, I think I filled you guys in on, on what the new uh, proposal was. You did. The, they did, they did uh, at the meeting, it was decided to go ahead with that new proposal. Hmm. So the principal payment would be $8,000. And the interest payment will be four thousand dollars, which is an increase of two thousand dollars a month uh, from the current allocation. Um, just a couple of things that the property that is for sale is valued was valued at one point five million. Um, the principal so far paid uh, as of May two thousand twenty four was two hundred and five four eighty two thousand. Um, they are going to get it revalued, so reappraised. Hmm. The co-op is going to get reappraised to see if that 1.5 is still in the in the ballpark of what it, what it's valued at. Interesting. Is okay. this where those houses that they want to put in are they further? No. Down? Well, it's part of. It's a portion of that property. That that development is looking at um, housing and some specialty shops. So hmm. not. Not just housing, but uh, some shops. You. So you'll be coming through from Sewell's Falls? Or no. No? No. 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 There's, Wait, be a, there, there would, there's potentially mean? going to be a gate at Sewell's Falls uh, for emergency access only, um, hmm. but the main, main entrance would be from uh, the, the roundabout at Exit 17. Um, the, the city does not want any traffic, any additional traffic on Sewell's Falls. No, I can't imagine they would. So. Yeah. Um, can you forward those minutes along when they come from that I last will. meeting, please? I will. Thank you. Yeah. Since and then the one last of us who said that they would be at the meeting neglected to show up, I do apologize. And then the last uh, item was um, on the tuition reimbursement yep. for mm -hmm. the former employee. Yep. I, I, the, our attorney sent the letter. They got a response. Uh, the employee would agree to a hundred dollars per uh, month of reimbursement. Um, they were thirty-seven hundred and some change, so be thirty-seven months. So no interest. Well, th that was the offer. Um, oh, that was their offer. To that us. was their offer uh, to the attorney. Got it. Um, it's up to you to determine. Um, my email back to the attorney was, seems like an awful long time to collect money on something that someone's actually making money off of today. Yeah. Since we provided them with that education. Yeah. Um, small claims court is an option that we can choose. Uh, we can file ourselves. It's electronic filing. Um, unless, unless the, uh, in this case, the former employee um, 
would like to sit in front of a judge, then both parties make an electronic filing that goes in front of a, the judge, the superior court, and the court decides, unless you want to appear in person. You need to see the party wants to appear in person. Right. Um, Not yeah, that it has, the, oh, sorry. The, the court could look at um, this and say, well, the person can only afford $100 a month, and so right. that's what we're going to award. Um, there's a, there's a uh, fee for applying for small claims for it. I think it's three hundred fifty dollars or something like that. Um, so if we, a year's worth of payment. If we do, we get you do get court costs. Court costs yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. I think we should reject that offer. Um, I've discovered it's hard to claim money in small claim courts, in my experience. Uh, do we know? And not that it necessarily matters, but is um, the person you can you can make a counter offer. Well, yeah, do, do, do we know if this person has already gotten a job in using these skills? That would make a difference. Yes, this person is now employed for the town of Northfield. Okay, then. Um, that makes a big difference because, as you say, they are using the skills that we pay oh, for right. uh, to not. So uh, I'm not sure what a reasonable counter offer would be, but, uh, you know, maybe to take the, the 3700 and divvy it up and have it be paid over the course of one year, as opposed to three years, um, which is, you know. 3750, 3733. 3733. Divided by 12, well. $311 and a little over $0.08 a month. Maybe 400 bucks and call that interest. I don't know. I mean, it, it, it seems small claims court, as you say, Kent, it's hard to shake money out of it. Um, if he's employed, uh, making money on our ticket, then I'd say he can pay. Um, maybe we'll give him a little bit of way, but it seems an interest-free loan is also a little yeah. rankles. Mm -hmm. So what's current interest rate on loan to one to credit card, for goodness sake, that's 70%. Oh. That's crazy. Do we have the ability to garnish his wages if we need it in small claim court? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure how, how that works. I can't imagine it would be a speedy process anyway. And if you go onto the website for small claims court, it says the courts are backed up and yeah. you're going to expect months of, uh, of wait time. Gotcha. So what's a reasonable, what's a reasonable interest rate on a, on a loan? Not 17 percent. What, what's current mortgage rates going? Could you tell you? I'm going to have to, gonna have to ask um, somebody who might know those things. I really don't know. Um, I would say at the very least, take that amount divided by 12, and and you know whatever that is, and you know 400 bucks a month bill for 12 months. I don't know what that means for interest, but it's a little bit more than. So it looks like a uh, 30 year fixed seven and a half percent. 15 years, 6.8%, 6 and a 10 years, 7.65%. 7% seems reasonable. Yeah, so what's 7% uh, what's on top of 3,733 divided by 12? He said well, if you turn to 12, you may squeeze the guy so he's not going to pay. It's 332.86 cents. A month? Yeah. If he's working, 330 bucks a month versus 100? I don't know. If he wasn't working, I would feel differently, I think. But if he's using our mm -hmm. yeah. the skills we paid for, then it would uh, well, Who else has another amount? I like that amount. All right. I, I that that's, works. A, yeah, that's a reasonable. That's our counter offer anyway. Three, you can three say thirty two. Three thirty two. What was the eighty six? For twelve months. And that will get to three a total of three thousand nine hundred and ninety four and thirty one cents. Which is the original amount yep. with seven percent added. Yep. 
that seems. I mean, again, that's our kind. You could say no, and then yeah, you know, we would. Exactly. <laughs> yep. But um. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Is coming back here empty? Yes. Please. All right. So one last thing for me actually is from either Kent or Ken. Have we made any progress with our dirt roads? Ah, that was on my list too. So Art talked to me two weeks ago. He called me up and he said, look, he says, I, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to make any decisions. He said, I, this guy wants to get going on the rest of his work. And he, he says, if you, if you don't want to do it, let's make a decision and not do it. We've got to come up with something for that money. And if we don't, we're going to, what are we going to do? Shuffle it out to various projects or give it back? We're not going to give it back. So, so my suggestion is, as it's been all along, is to consider art some sort of a czar, road superintendent, or something, a non-paying position. And this other guy is a contractor. We're going to hire him. We're going to agree on a price. And then we're also going to pay for whatever materials John seems to think needs to go in there. And I think we'll come out to roughly the, the uh, 50000 that we had talked with John about on the amount of materials that we're not going through that road. I don't know how else to, to share the this. Well, the problem with we <laughs> still don't have any further communication from Art with any other prices on any of the other you roads. You don't ask John to go up and do all the, the asphalt roads in town. But we had seven roads that we talked to him about, and he only ever answered us and about one. I only asked him for one because I want this to be a demonstration project. And I want us to see if we can't train somebody to do this work or go with this guy. I, I don't know. Okay, that's that's your opinion on how this should be approached, but we asked for information that he never that he didn't give us. And he still hasn't given us. So if, if you'd like to ask that question to him, call him up and ask him. He's gonna say that's not what I talked to Ken about and that's not what I want to do. Okay, but am I the only one who thinks that we should get the bigger scope of all seven roads that we started out talking about before we say yes, no, or appoint him a czar, so, or? So first of all, we're not appointing him a czar. Or whatever one wants to call it. Um, but we can't. We have a road agent. And the so road this, agent is in charge of the roads. And this guy's just going to be in charge of this one project for us. So here's the issues. It, it's already, we're, we're into August. Mm -hmm. We haven't even started yet. We have know. to. We have to have a plan in place to spend this money by the end of this year. And one road doesn't give us a plan. And he just doesn't seem. I, I don't know. I was. I was quite frankly not impressed by the fact that he came 25 minutes late to his appointment. The bid that we got was for half the amount that it was really going to cost. 24 instead of oh no, it's really going to cost 48. Already, that didn't necessarily impress me, and I don't think, I don't know how we uh, determine uh, with doing one road, if it's a, a demonstration project, okay, what if we don't like the way it goes, then we're really up against the deadline about spending the rest of the money. So what I had originally thought we were going to get from Art was, here's our seven roads that we have on our list, talk to your guy, and give us an estimate and a bid on doing these seven roads and we'll see how that fits in with the money we have to spend. And we didn't get any of that. So to me that I don't I don't know one road doesn't take care of our problem or spend our money. So, so I, I, I'm just gonna back off on this one and I don't know how else to suggest we go forward with it other than trying it out and see if it works for us. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. And we, we, We've learned that, but I, I don't want to ask him to try and figure out all the roads in town and all the materials when we're not paying him for anything. Not just, all the roads in town, it's just the seven roads that we designated. The seven dirt roads, then. Let me be more plain. Yeah, but all the roads in town is not the seven roads that we're talking about that we mm -hmm. started out as the scope of this project. Mm -hmm. He's yet to weigh in on the, the what we've asked him to. And, and am I the only one who's... Am I missing a big point can here? I, can I? I sent the email out um, on the 17th huh. of July outlining my concerns. Yep. Um, I don't know if you guys all read it or yep. responded. Um, 
I think my, my one biggest concern right now is that ARC is supposed to connect John and the contractor so they could do a site visit together and determine the scope of the project. And that has never happened. I don't know how you have a contractor hire a contractor without some kind of scope of work that is agreed upon by, by the parties. Does that seem like I mean, if, and I, I said this to Art. I said, Art, if you are hiring a subcontractor, would you not meet with them unless it's somebody you've done business with before and go over the scope of the job? Of course you would. And and that hasn't happened. And and I don't know I don't, and I don't know why. Um, that's my concern. As a as a budget manager. I have a problem with hiring a contractor that hasn't agreed to come out and meet with the with the vendor or with the uh, with the people that are going to be paying to go over the scope of work. Well, I mean, I know I don't count for much. I'm just a selectman. But he and I did drive the roads around here, and we did go up and spend some time looking at that one in the park. You did that with the hire. Not John. I know. I not, said not the contractor. Let's just. I don't know. Art's not going to be the one in the machine doing the work. And I, it, it doesn't well, mean that. I, I, I wish I, you wouldn't say you don't count for much as a select board member because that's not true. I, I don't want to be in the middle of this anymore. I it's, tried. It didn't work. <clears throat> that's that. Okay, so then do you not want to ever talk with Art anymore? I mean, no, he I, might be a reasonable contractor if he would answer our questions, but he doesn't seem to. Um, so where do we go from here if, if if Art doesn't, or do we contact Art directly and say come meet with John and, and fulfill the, answer the questions that we want you to as best you can, or say you can't answer them and we'll move on. Yeah, how do, how do we go from here? Time is getting short, first of all. I mean, we're, we're over eight months into the year now. And is this, um, that's also in our packet here from, oh, this is just driveway maintenance, right? That's, that's the company that uh, had requested information. That was the letter that we got from the guy in right, Boston who was, who was, that has a grader that would agree to come out and work on the roads right. on an hourly basis. But I think if we can't quickly get back on course, then we've got to look for another way to spend this money. Yeah. But the needs of those, however many roads, I keep saying seven, I'm, I'm not exactly sure now that that's the number. The needs of that those roads were the top of our list and are still, correct, if we could find somebody to do them? Correct. So if- Well, we've been at this since May, it's August. Correct, but if we make a call to, if, if you don't want to make the call, whoever wants to make the call to Art to say, can you do this, yes or no? And if he says no, then we're, we look elsewhere and we give ourselves, what, a month to see if we can find somebody else to contract, and if not, spend the money somewhere else, which of which there are other places, but the roads the money, are very The started. money has to be dedicated by the end of this year. Yeah. It can be spent up until next right. year. Right, right. So if we found another contractor that was interested and gave us a contract this year, they could do the work next year. Right. How about this what? guy that, that sent us this proposal? Is he somebody that we could contact and get a number? We could. Sounds like he's a grader operator. He does. Um, yeah. Can we still send our grader back or do we need to buy this? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we have a contract that, that, that it should be here in the next two weeks. It just seems that if the roads that we started out as the top priority in the town are still a priority. They're not they haven't gotten any better since we started this discussion. Right. Either art is in or out. Um, apparently, the the discussion since our, the last time we came in here hasn't happened. Are you can you can you, can you give us a scope of work on these seven roads or not? You should be able to say yes or no fairly quickly. One would think either yes or no. And if he says no, okay, fine. We'll go look elsewhere to get those seven roads taken care of. And if we can't find that in a quickly, 
we're going to have to figure out what's next on the list. If it's not roads, where we're going to spend the money. Yep. Is that is that an unreasonable way to to go? I mean, I, I think it's. I almost feel like it's giving art an extra chance that I'm. I'm not confident that he'll want to pick up on from the interactions we've had so far. But so far, he's the person we've been dealing with. So ask him first, and he can either say yes or no. But if it's yes, he's going to have to jump on it and, and be a little bit more forthcoming with a good scope and good numbers than he has been, is my opinion. So is that something you want me to make a phone call to her? Yeah. I, I do not have the uh, technical expertise to have that conversation, so yes, please. Okay. Yeah. And you've still got the, I'm assuming, the list from John that we started with. Which which he also should already have. Good. You may not remember that he does, but if you gently remind him he should have that list. And then so here we are in August. September's budgeting. We've got to do that by the end. So if we knew yay or nay from art, you should be able to tell us by the 23rd is it? No, we're in August. No, yes. Yeah. I mean, if you call him tomorrow or whenever. Wednesday. Wednesday, yes. He should be able to get back to us by the 19th, right? By our next meeting? Why wouldn't he? All he has to do is say yes or no, I want to do this or I don't. It's not a small amount of work. Okay. Is that reasonable? All I can do is reach out. Right. By the 19th? And if not by the 19th, by the 9th, because if we don't have it by the 9th, then we've only got September, October, and, well, say September and October to find someone else. And if we don't, then we've only got November and December to figure out what else to do with the money. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, um, but uh, as we enter the budgeting process, I think that's, a, that's the time to make a decision. Okay. Well, budget coming. You, you want budget to come in the first meeting in uh, September, right? Correct. So that's when it starts. So on the budget side of things, it looks to me like that tree up in front of the old Elkins building is very dead. Yes. Should we contact Magoon and get a price on it so we've got one for the budget committee when we're ready? I, I can do that. Does that seem prudent to people? I, I think it's very good. Sounds, yeah, it certainly looks it. It's yeah. not it's yeah. very well. It's not looking great. Which tree? Yeah. One right in front of the line. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Christmas yeah. tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's yeah. not looking good. Okay. Unfortunately. Um, do we have any updates on that Eagle Land offer for the 30 acres off 106? Uh, we looked into that company and it is not a reputable. Okay. <laughs> Somehow I was thought that might be the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we looked into it and we both came to the decision that. Uh, really? And we, then I just went off the. the those, are those are probably like the like the letters I get for the off the land next to me right. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and do we want to uh, invite um, any school board reps to come to a select board meeting to talk about the upcoming tax bill and? Come up with a plan for a simple way uh, we can give people a heads up FYI this is what's coming and why so even though we have we already have yeah and, and DRA sets the tax rate right DRA sets the tax rate would they have an idea I, I mean we I talked at our last meeting I yeah. talked to the superintendent and he said he didn't know and then we got the estimated cost and it's 1.4 million dollars more right. Um, I spoke to one of the school board members the other day and brought that up. Uh, they didn't really have a good answer. Um, I, it, it certainly would not hurt to have the school board, a couple of school board members come in and chat with you guys and say, we're going to have to find it from somebody. Because I have had some inquiries. Are we going to try and notify the general public or the taxpayers that there will be an increase, and if we have any idea of what it might be. Well, um, even even if we don't know the what of it, 
it seems like the school board should weigh in since it's the school portion of the right. tax mm -hmm. is going up so dramatically. Yeah. Um, and even if it's a joint statement from the school board and the select board just saying, hey, well, right. not oops, but like heads up FYI, this is coming and this is why um, we're, you know, if the BOS wants to say this is why we're cutting taxes on other services so your tax bill doesn't go up or what, whatever the <coughs> statement is or the school board saying, this is the formula, this is what we had to do, this is who we had to hire, this is what we did, you know, whatever. It's all been said before mm. in several different ways, but people are, it, it's getting down to tax bill time and I think people are getting nervous. Agreed. It might yeah. just be helpful to yep. say I something. Certainly if, so when would you like to have a couple of school board members? Yeah, that might be. Budget? Okay. Great time. But I also think that if if they're not going to alert our taxpayers, then we should. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that'd be uh, that'd be the conversation to have with them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And when they're invited, say that's why that's mm -hmm. part of what we would like you to if you want yeah. to prepare something beforehand. Sure. All right. <laughs> yeah. uh, All right. I don't even know what form that would take, short and sweet. You know, nobody read through the whole big school board budgeting yeah, thing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And have it on the small enough that it'll go on the town uh, newsletter website and in the newsletter and on the town site and everywhere we can. Just everywhere, so yeah. people won't be happy, but yeah, um, they should know for the fifth time that it's coming. Yeah. What else you got? I think that was it. Um, yes. Very cool. Good. Okay, yeah, that's it. Okay, looking for a motion. So moved. Uh, second. All those in favor of aye. aye.